Greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome to another week's worth of Archcast. Where, before we begin, real quickly, Fallout. Because I did a, I did a video on Fallout just today. Dev2 has realized that it's bad, and Dev's immediate impression was, of course, what is the trans community's take on Fallout? <laughs> well... Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Since I know that that your your chat is not that left leaning, I need to inform you guys of some of some deep lore. Okay, there is a meme in the online trans community that Fallout New basically that if you play Fallout New Vegas and you're a male, you're going to turn into a trans woman. Okay, they have for some reason trans women love Fallout New Vegas a lot, a lot, and I don't I don't exactly know why there doesn't seem to be any correlation like there's no special trans representation in the game or anything but it's a meme it's a it's a meme on the left wing side of the internet that fallout new vegas is the quintessential trans game um and so the new new fallout show came out and i haven't seen it yet but you have arch what, what is your tldr of the show uh it is bethesda's Petty vengeance against New Vegas. That's what it is. It undermines everything. The NCR is a band of uh, raiders, nothing more. The uh, the Fallout, the Brotherhood of Steel, is nothing more than a bunch of uninspired thugs with no moral code or objective whatsoever. Um, the Wasteland is both neutered and more savage in a weird way. Like, there are no tribes, there are no real gangs or anything, and yet everyone acts in the worst way imaginable, with just grossity for the sake of grossity. Right. And I mean, Fallout had a sense of humor. It wasn't like a hyper-serious RPG. You could find, like, goofy things in all the Fallout games, right? Which is fine. You know, it's okay to have a sense of humor. Like, you put in a few NPCs that are just, like, weird... And they kind of like, I remember in one game, there was one guy, he like lived in, I think, uh, an old sporting goods store and he worshiped baseball. He thought it was like, he was, he thought it was some like ancient religion, you know, stuff like that. Right. You, you can have goofiness in Fallout. You should have goofiness in Fallout. Oh, yeah. Like goofiness. Okay. Dev, explain to me the goofiness in a scene where you see a woman giving birth in a water tank to a school of lizard monsters that then eat her alive. <laughs> See, this is what I mean, right? Is you can have goofiness, but I think the people who made the show just didn't fucking understand the line they had to uh, they had to basically balance. You know what I mean? There, there's not that much goofy in uh, in the TV show. There's a lot of dumb. There's a lot of like undermining of the the rest of the plot kind of like they they have a scene that is very serious and then it cuts to another scene where a Roomba with a syringe is trying to stab a guy even as the guy completely ignores the Roomba <laughs> okay see i haven't seen the show yet so i can't really comment on the show but here's what here's what i what i know right the fallout new vegas is probably the best of the fallout games I think even including Fallout 1 and 2, like, they're old, but they're good, but they're, like, e even playing them back then, like, New Vegas probably has the the most developed story, because it has, like, the four factions that are all kind of vying for control, and you can actually you can actually side with them all, and they all have their own views of the world, you know? It's it's a very well-made, very in-depth game, New Heresy's Vegas. I think it's probably the best one of the Fire series. The <laughs> um, and this show specifically goes out of its way to shit on New Vegas. Yes. From what I understand. I haven't seen it, but what, from what I understand, um, they say that before the events of New Vegas even happen, uh, four years earlier, the capital of the NCR is destroyed by a nuke. And it's like, well, when you hear about the NCR in New Vegas, it sounds like they've basically rebuilt civilization in California. Like they have farms and they have like functioning cities and they have trade routes and like it's it, they've they've kind of recreated a microcosm of the United States in the NCR, and it is a functioning society. And now they're expanding eastward into uh, into the New Vegas territory. Um, that it just doesn't track with 
the fact that in this show, four years before New Vegas happens, they've destroyed the capital of the NCR? Like, it makes no sense. Why, why would the NCR be outwardly expanding? Why would it have the excess resources to do so? Probably just a poor understanding of the timeline and just a general annoyance at New Vegas. But yeah, luckily, yeah. Dev, there, there is trans representation in the Fallout TV show. Oh, is there? Oh, great. Yeah, I put a image in the link channel. Let's uh, see that, it. Uh, that slight pencil mustache person there on the right. Yeah. That's, How do they possibly get the hormones in the wasteland? That's a female, apparently. And they're even described as they in the show. Mm. Mm. Oh, oh. Did the radiation do it to him? A brother of steel is, uh, is quite progressive in this regard. Oh, also... Well, well hold on. To, to be fair, though, they had a lesbian in, um, in New Vegas in the Brother of Steel. So yeah. Brother of Steel doesn't I don't, care I don't, about I don't, your I sexuality. I think they do yeah, care about care your about hormone that, yeah. treatments. <laughs> oh, because it's technology based, right? That as yeah, well. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, um, for some reason, um, for some reason, the trans community online has this great affinity for New Vegas to the point that it's a meme. And this show has ruined New Vegas. Anybody who cares about the lore notices that th this show just shat all over the legacy of New Vegas. So I decided, I decided to go and see, like, if the trans community really does actually care about New Vegas. Surely they would also be angry that the show has shat all over New Vegas. Um, but they seem to be just fine with it. Now, I haven't done a big deep dive on this yet, but uh, I did a, a, you know, a cursory Twitter glance, just a, checked out a few accounts that I know are very pro-trans and very terminally online. You know, did a few searches and um, they don't seem to care. <laughs> they don't seem to care that their favorite game is apparently being destroyed lore wise by this TV show. Hmm. Probably because they were never actually fans of the game. They were fans of what they believed it said about them. I mean, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I still don't completely understand the, the trans affinity for New Vegas. I, st I still don't get it. Because it's not like any of the four factions you can choose are actually in any way leftist. Right? Like, the NCR is like a, kind of like a neoliberal, old world kind of nightmare. Um... Mr. House is basically the libertarian autocrat. And you have you have like an ancient empire in in the form of the Legion, like like a slaver empire that's straight out of the old world. And then the anarchists who just destroy everything. It's like, like there's no good. There's no there's no like communist leftist like socialist option in New Vegas to choose from. Well, actually, they turned Mr. House evil, too. He was actually uh, in on it with Voltex to uh, do the Volt experiments. Oh, and uh, it wasn't China oh, who was nuked he? America. It was Voltec. Oh, okay. That's, a, that, that's actually a huge change. Yeah, that's a I think, I think massive in, change. I think in Fallout 3, they explicitly said that China fired the first nuke. Mm -hmm. And do you know why Voltec decided to nuke America? Why? To increase their market share. That makes no fucking sense. There's no more market. Yes, it doesn't make any fucking sense. But that is the stated reason. Voltec nuked America to wipe out the opponents. They, they nuked America to wipe out the competition. And like, hold on. The whole point of the Mr. House storyline is that he saw that the world was going to be destroyed, so he put himself in a bunker. Like, he might have known beforehand you know, that, that that might be okay, but the idea is that he did not want to destroy humanity. He wanted to rebuild it, so he put himself into a bunker and he put himself into some machines so he could extend his life, and he was like, I'm going to, I'm going to rebuild civilization because I don't want... Like, he's... <laughs> he's, he's... He's a capitalist, sure, but he's, he, he's not like Caesar's Legion. You know, he does not want to resign humanity to just a, like slavery and barbarism. He actually has a vision for the future that is somewhat positive and that he's actually working towards. It's not just nonsense. Maybe he did, Dev, but no more. Man. No more indeed. I like, okay, because I, th I think Mr. House is probably one of the most beloved characters in New Vegas. And he's the one they specifically decide to ruin. 
<laughs> oh, they just had to ruin all of them. All of the big corporations were in on the Volt experiments now. It wasn't even just vault doing this shit. And the, uh, the generational ship has been written out completely. That, that was never vault intentions anymore. Oh. Wow. So yeah, they pretty much just, uh, <laughs> just ruined everything, unironically. This sounds like they ruined everything. My god. You know, okay, so so Arch, we watched um The Last of Us. Okay, we watched The Last of Us TV show together. You, me, and Kibbs and Lilith. And it wasn't a very good show. It certainly got worse as the season went on, but it did at least somewhat follow the lore established in the game. And I think fans of the game liked it for that reason. This doesn't seem to be following any lore whatsoever. It does not. In fact, it actively tries to ruin most of the raw lore. Fire is it the is the, the definition of the skin suit that wears Fallout as a covering whilst trying to Bethesdify things by burning everything to the ground so that Bethesda can do anything and everything they want to it. Heresy is the question. Yeah. Fire yeah. is the answer. I saw in a trailer, I, again, I haven't seen the show, so this is just me talking off the cuff. I saw in a trailer that she was walking through, like, a green forest wasn't the whole point is that there was no more green forests and the only location that had actual like an actual forest was that one grotto in Fallout 3? There's quite a lot of greenery, actually, in this one. Oh, okay. I'm, like, already demoralized. <laughs> oh. Here's the thing. I, I like Fallout a lot. It's probably one of, my, one of my favorite RPG series of all time. I like the lore, I like the setting, I like I like the characters, I like the, you know, the retro futurism. It's all very interesting stuff. Um I played the shit out of Fallout 3 back when I was like I think it was like late high school when I when it came out. I loved that game and it's just like it's it's ruined. It's completely ruined. Everything you did in any previous Fallout game no longer matters. None of it. No decision, no story action, nothing. They've wiped it all yeah. clean so that they can make their own stuff. Yep. Yep. That's oh. a shame. Puvilos Zemitis for 100 euros. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, how many virgins do I have to sacrifice to Archcast, Boundless Tome of Law, Devourer of the Pastries, for a stream playthrough of Dominion 6 for the excellent Sombra Warhammer mod? Dominion 6, eh? Hmm. I'll, I'll think about it. Um, hmm. If anything, I'll try to maybe set up a campaign of Dominion 6 at some point. Because playing Dominion 6 against just the AI is relatively easy. Playing Dominion 6 against other people is far more intriguing. <laughs> and I see you there, Boo, too. Mr. House is Robco, not Voltec, you Philistine. Well, that's Mr. House on screen right now, Robco, at a meeting at vault where he not only agrees to partake in the human experiments, but eagerly does so. Checkmate, Mr. Boog. You've been defeated. Fire is the answer. <laughs> yeah, okay. He wasn't motivated by money in New Vegas. He didn't care about money. I mean, he, he was rich before the war, but he still didn't care about money. That was... Uh, God... It's 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 the most like it's the most stupid socialist take. It's like, oh, if you own a company, you just have to be motivated by money and nothing else. It's so fucking reductive, dude. Speaking of that too, I'm going to do a little self shill today, as uh, I am doing a limited edition shirt sale. Gatekeep always, because you should always. Gatekeep. It is the only defense against anything whatsoever. So I'll pin that in the uh, the top of the chat box, and I'll be doing all pins to these in the uh, various videos I do for a while as now as well. Gatekeep always a limited run T-shirt for those who are interested. Because yes, if you do not gatekeep, if you do not control your own hobbies and settings, this will happen. And I bear, bear in mind as well, is the this question. isn't even is the answer. <laughs> like an outsider that's ruining this. Bethesda gave their stamp of approval to this rape. 
They agreed to it. They pushed for it. Harry, they declared it canon. The answer. <laughs> because, bear in mind too, Bethesda weren't the creators of Fallout, of course. They bought Fallout. And ever since New Vegas, oh, they hate New Vegas. Because New Vegas was good. And every time Bethesda releases so a soulless, open-world FPS imitation of Fallout, people look at New Vegas and oh, go, why couldn't you do that? That, that was way better. Why, why couldn't you do that one instead? And this was just their final the pissed off Fire attempt the to destroy <laughs> that. And technically yeah, they did. New, New Vegas so, is a ruin. So here's the thing. Bethesda made Fallout 3, and that was still a pretty good game. That was a really enjoyable experience, Fallout 3. Uh, Fallout New Vegas was just made with the Fallout 3 engine really quickly. So they used all the same assets with very with very few new assets. But they got the writer from Fallout 2 to come back and do the story for New Vegas. And in fact, he actually adapted a bunch of the story that he had written for the original Fallout 3, the uh, Fallout Van Buren. He adapted that. And I think I think that story, like, you were you were a convict and you were in a jail and you would actually somehow get out and there, there was a conflict between Caesar's Legion and the NCR, so and it was happening uh, not in New Vegas this time. It was happening around Boulder, Colorado. But basically, it was the same type of story. So this guy from uh, from Interplay, I forget his name, Chris something, I think. Um, but he wrote so he, he wrote on Fallout Two, and he wanted he was he was making Fallout Three before it got canceled. And when they brought him back on, he's like, I can finally do the Fallout story that I've been sitting on for like twenty years. So he does, or like, it would have been 10 years at that point. So they, they do New Vegas. People love it because it's actually good writing. All right. <laughs> and then since then, you had um, Fallout 4, which was like, okay, but it was like a diminished Fallout 3, frankly. The, the, big sell, the big selling point for Fallout 4 is that it's got a bigger world than Fallout 3. It's like, well, that's good. But the stuff in the world is not nearly as interesting. And then Fallout 76 was just a fucking nightmare. Apparently, oh. it's actually okay now. Like they they did the whole No Man's Sky thing, where they released a like a a terrible game and then updated it for five years, and now it's actually playable. What I would say is Fallout Three was a a a decent Oblivion mod. It was not a Fallout <laughs> game, but it, it it sufficed because we hadn't gotten any Fallout for a very long time, and there was no way we would be getting any Fallout either without Bethesda picking it up. So, okay, fair, fair enough. Fallout 4 was just Fallout 3, but with, like, a map pack. Like, it was it was literally a officially made mod. It added next to nothing. It I, I, I don't understand why people like Fallout 4. I really don't. Like, the writing's not particularly good. Companions aren't particularly good. Quest isn't particularly good. Graphics aren't particularly improved. They didn't really add anything new. They re they asset flipped 98% of the stuff in there. And it was an obvious sign of the increasing laziness of Bethesda. And when they announced 76, I knew it was going to be a flop. And to this day, I sort of regret not leaping on the it's going to be a flop train because it was such an enormous flop, it launched careers. And I was looking at it like, yep, this is going to be so bad, there's not even any point in talking about it. It's just going to be garbage, unavoidably. Mm -hmm. I decided to, to, to do a quick search while you were uh, shilling the t-shirts, Arch, which actually looked pretty good. Um, yeah. And I, I went over to uh, the subreddit r slash trans gamers to take a peek at uh, why they like Fallout so much. So here, here's their here's their splurb, okay, as to why trans women like Fallout so much. Fallout New Vegas is the perfect virtual outlet for the accumulated trauma of the trans experience. You can make a character including gender, you can fight against regressive fascists, Caesar's Legion, you can meet plenty of other LGBTQ people along the way that are actually well-rounded so characters. Most of the LGBTQ people in the game, you wouldn't even know they were LGBTQ unless you took the time to talk to them and get to know them. Your character can be canonically gay or bi with the use of certain perks too. Most importantly, the world and its major factions are ambivalent enough to be believable. Of course we hate the Legion, they would kill us given the chance. But the NCR isn't perfect. They exploit their workers, they're xenophobic, they're imperialistic. House is a dictator just like Caesar, right? <laughs> well, maybe you hate autocracy, but House seems benevolent and might have the best interest of humanity in mind. You could ultimately side with yourself and play God in the wasteland. Why not? 
<laughs> Even in this virtual world where we're allowed to be ourselves as trans people, for many of us, much more than in, in the everyday world, we can also be gods. So I guess they like the anarchist ending of of New Vegas because they get to ruin everything and rule over the ashes and also be trans. Is this like the be gay, do crimes kind of thing? They just want everything to burn. Maybe. I suppose. Like if you, if you hate everything, then I guess the post-apocalyptic wasteland is it's a nice home. Yeah, yeah. And as I was reading this, I was thinking about it, and I was like, "That's right. There's actually a massively degenerate, almost like brony-like subsection of the Fallout fan base." Do you recall Arch? the uh the fallout frontier controversy fallout frontier no yes so there was a bunch of talented modders that were modding uh new vegas to make a whole new game and and they actually did a very good job of it like it's a massively expansive game there's a ton of content they they made new character models they voiced these characters like they were making a full a full sized like 70 dollar game in new vegas However, it turns out that one of the main developers was a massive fetishist. And as people began to play the game, they noticed all of their fetishes were constantly inserted just randomly into the game. So this 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 is like I think 3 or 4 years ago this uh, this lore, but this is a this is one of the screenshots that went viral after the game came out. <laughs> just uh read read that dialogue from the companion character known as America. Let's see. I'm dreading taking off my boots tonight after the running around we've been doing, who my feet will probably put rotting fish to shame. Okay. Yes, there's a, there's a bunch of foot fetish stuff in the game. Ah, well, okay. And there's also a bunch of BDSM stuff in the game where, like, you can, you can pass a... Uh, a max level speech check to enslave America. Basically, the character of America is abused heavily by the developers of this game because, well, for obvious reasons, they, they don't like America. <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess I appreciate the option, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's also a bunch of pedophilia in the game too. Ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, why not? Yep. There, there's, there's a bunch of gender bendy stuff, and there's a bunch of uh, foot fetish stuff, and a, bu a bunch of pedophilia. It's yeah. It, it is basically just the Fallout game for the internet's favorite degenerates. And so it, it went massively viral. I think three or four years ago, and basically destroyed the project. But it was a it was a it was a fun time in the in like in the fallout sphere of the internet, you know what I mean? To watch like the to watch the entire project go up in flames because someone couldn't just not insert their own fucking fetishes into the goddamn script of the game they were making. Well, Fallout Equestria is looking better and better by the moment. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't you didn't know about this deep lore. Why? Should I know about this fetish simulator? Oh, yeah. Hold on. Wait. Do you want to see the video where you can have sex with the Deathclaw? No. <laughs> hold on a second. Yeah. That's what I figured. I'm going to get it to you. That's oh, what I on. fucking gonna... figured, Dev. Here. Here. Just. You don't got to watch the whole thing, Narch. I'm just going to paste it to you, okay? Just pause it at, like, the one second mark and... And read that dialogue. <laughs> Dev literally has no concept of consent. Literally. It doesn't exist in the Devian dictionary. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not going to click on that. I'm not, I, I am not going to click on that. Just, no, no, bad Dev. Bad, bad Dev. The death claws wandering eyes convey all you need to know. You are looking at an entity of pure lust. <laughs> Again, Dev does not understand the concept of consent. 
Okay, so just out of curiosity, Arch, if you had to choose, if you could revoke the Fallout show from the canon, but make Fallout the Frontier canon instead, would you make the trade? Well, I mean, fetishism is at the end of the day less destructive than rampant retcons and the hatred of the franchise, so yeah, sure. <laughs> But at this point, I would replace both of them with Fallout Equestria as well. So, there's that. <laughs> so, that is all I have to say about Fallout for today. Fallout no longer exists, chat. Fallout Equestria is the real spiritual successor to Fallout 1 and 2. The bombs did, uh, well, they, they did a lot weirder mutations than we originally expected. And you're just going to have to live with that from now on, I'm afraid. So, with... You know, you know, to be fair, considering the whole lusty Argonian maid thing, you know, the, the, the sexual death claw is not that far out of the realm of possibility. Maybe, but I'm pretty sure the Lusty Argonian Maid, which I think has been in, like, every Elder Scrolls title, is more obviously a joke rather than this. <laughs> yeah, because in, in the mod, they very clearly, like, want this to be a serious sex scene. It's not just, like, a, a throwaway, yeah. So... What's the uh, what's the next topic for today? Now that Fallout's done, uh, Fallout's done. Well, actually, first I I go through a few of these super chats that came in because a lot of them had to do with Fallout. Uh, Pleasant Warrior One, hey Arch, it's been a while since I was last able to catch a live stream. Starship Troops Extermination came out with 07 update this week and is great. We now get six classes and more weapons. Any news on when we can expect expect Sabbat World Crusade lore? In it is in early production now. It is just a question of how I'm going to have it edited at this point, basically. As, goddammit, there's just not enough hours in the day, I feel like. There's not enough time to do everything I want to do anymore. We need longer work days. That's what we need. Longer work days, harsher working conditions. That is what humanity requires. Uh, Solon Lich makes sense, Rainbow Weirdos see themselves are in uh, New Vegas. It has super mutant granny and plenty of lobotomites. It's like it's Black Isle it's like Black Isle saw it all coming. And ARC5, it gets worse then. They patched New Vegas just to break all the mods on it, and don't get me started on what they did to my boy's house my boy house. They patched it? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, no, that, that, that sounds like an act of just petulance. Because there is no reason to patch New Vegas beyond breaking the mods, I guess. Well, I'm, I'm going to look it up, actually. I'm kind of curious. Hold on. Yeah, nothing popped up immediately for me. Uh, Boog, Mr. House's Rob Co, not Voltec, you feel Stein. <laughs> Mr. Luckless, if it wasn't China that launched the first nukes, Fallout 3 left hints that it was really aliens. It wasn't. It was Voltec all along. Miss Next anyone, this show isn't real or canon. Writers are pure so evil. They are. But it's still canon. This is Fallout now. Reject Fallout. Don't be tex -ex. Arch, how is it possible that they match Bethesda Emil Palig... Palig Raulu? Level of bad law, breaking writing? How, I ask? Because they hate it. That's why. They want to hurt it. Brendan Lucas, two non-Fallout fans talk about how a law-friendly Fallout show breaks the law. Same grift. Must be a day ending in Y. Um, no. I know. <laughs> One, Voltec did not launch the nukes. Two, Voltex had no point in launching the nukes because they're working on the generational, generational ship. Three, Mr. House certainly wouldn't have been on it. Four, if they truly were trying to establish so market dominance, they would not have brought in everyone else in it. Five, the Brotherhood of Steel is not an organization filled with pussies that will run screaming from opposition. 
Seven, the NCR is not a band of raiders. Eight, Voltec could not randomly nuke Shady Sands because some middle management director said so. And we could keep going for quite some time. Jack the Outcast. To be fair, Bethesda destroyed and retconned Fallout for lore. They de de Con, deconned Fallout Tactics. Jet wasn't invented before the war, instead during Fallout 2, and they made Fallout 76 fuck modernity. Very much so. Uh, Panzer 4 Commander, first Super Chat 2, thank you very much. Hey Arch, what do you think of the Metro series? I've only played Metro 1 and 2. I, I forget their, like, name, like if they're 20... 33 or Redux or whatever, but I play the first one, I play the second one. Quite enjoyed both of them. Mario Trujillo, Demoralized Dev is best dev. Oh, good. Demoralized Okay, dev. I looked it up. Uh, basically, it got a graphics update to make ray tracing work with it. Oh. That's all. That's pointless. They got like a, you know, for so for like new graphics cards, if you want to run ray tracing on your Fallout New Vegas on your PC, now you have ray tracing. But why would I want to do this? I don't know. I, I think a lot of companies are going back to games that are 10 or 15 years old that are still you know kind of playable on modern hardware. And they're making them run a little bit smoother just to prevent them from aging out. Which is like something I can appreciate, you know. There are, there are so many old games that take... Uh, it takes know. so many mods and like you, you got to really like like Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. How many patches and like fan mods do you have to install to make that game runnable? You know what I mean? Not that so, many, but I also just don't think they're doing this out of the kindness of their heart. Really, you think they're you think they're adding ray tracing not to actually add ray tracing, but to fuck with modders? Yeah, I don't know about that. No, I I, I, I do know that. about that. The ray tracing is goddamn pointless. And now, as the new show comes out, they're like, hey. Hey, we, we know this new show like ruined everything and actively tried to destroy this thing. We're just, gonna, we're just gonna do this little thing here. It's gonna ruin all of the mods for it. It's gonna make the entire product significantly less good because most of the modders will not come back to fix their six or seven year old mods at this point. And they go, well, we did a good thing. Why, why are you angry that we ruined everything? I don't know. That's a bit of a stretch for me. Uh, like here, here. I saw. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, so a few, no um, stretch, no stretch. Like a week ago, uh, the game Alan Wake Two Heresy got an question. update that allowed oh, older answer. computers to run the game since it, it lowered the minimum system requirements. And I saw people saying on the internet, on on Twitter, people going like, "Oh my God, Alan Wake Two was was on the Sweet Baby Inc. detected list." So very clearly, they're scared that being exposed by us is 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 going to tank their game. So they've so they've widened the actual uh, install base, p p potential install base for the game by making it easier to run. And I'm like, that is some conspiracy brained bullshit. Okay, games get get uh, patches for for old hardware all the time. Like this is. I don't know. I think I think people need to log the fuck off sometimes. All right. Not everything feeds into this unified Heresy narrative. Sometimes Fire people are just updating the a game to make it run better. <laughs> Coinky dinky winkly. Dev, your conspiracy radar is malfunctioning. Get it replaced. Oh no, I see the conspiracies. I just don't believe them. Uh, that's the problem, Dev. Your conspiracy dar is clearly not tuned enough. <laughs> Sand Doom said, I bet if Rene Alperjunis was still alive and under the script of the Fallout TV show, then he'd rip these writers to shed. He voiced Robert House. I'm sure they are doing their best to ruin his legacy, too. Slowly but surely. Brent well, Lucas. I, they've already done that, right? So, so you, you know the guy who played Mr. House was, um, was it Rene Alperjunis? How do you pronounce his name? I don't know. But he, he is the same guy who played Odo on Deep Space Nine. If You watch Deep Space Nine, right? Nope. Star Trek Deep Space Nine? Really? Nope. Star Trek is gay. Okay, well, do you know the character of Odo? Do you know what he was like? Nope. He was a policeman. Okay? And he was he was kind of up his own ass a little bit, but he was very orderly and he liked he liked the law being followed and he would patrol the promenade and he would make sure everyone is is, you know, on the up and up. All right. He was a he was a very um proper, orderly, kind of hard nosed, but ultimately a good guy, right? That was Odo. 
Um, and the same guy that played Mr. House played Odo in DS9. Heresies and what, what's interesting is, is the nowadays <laughs> the writers of DS9 have gone back and said that Odo was a fascist. And I'm just like, no, he wasn't. He was. He was. He was a policeman. Star Trek is gay, though. Of course. That's the same thing, isn't it, though? <laughs> is To the progressives, a policeman who comes along and says, hey, you can't spray paint on the wall, move along, kids. That's a fascist. By the modern-day definition. <laughs> uh, ben Lucas, Mr. House in the show, is skeptical of the vault plants plans in the show, and the vault CEO ends up as a brain in a jar. That's the joke. He's skeptical, but he jones in on it. Like, he literally partakes in talking about the experiments. He's in the room. He does Like, he should have left the room. There's no way he would even have been there. And the Voltex CEO ends up in the jar literally because that's his plan, to conquer time, which will be the ultimate weapon against their competitors. Uh, ben Lucas, Chris Avalone didn't write the Forward New Age questline. The writer of Horizon wrote it. Chris Avalone was the one who said the NCR should be nuked. Really? Like, I gotta look that up. Hold on. Let's see. And like mine, Todd doesn't know how to tell a story outside of Flanderized Mad Max Wasteland or any complex in universe politics. So that's Harris why he nuked the, the NCR. Fire is the answer. <laughs> I'm as well, people who liked Fallout 4, those who came onto the Bethesda train during the release of Skyrim on console. They do not have anything to compare it to. Maybe. Uh, not a question. band account. What Fire do you think the of answer. the rise of US MAGA fascism? Dev? Hello. Is, is that a thing? Hello, V. Hey, V, what's up? I can't stay for long, but um, did you guys uh, see the whole controversy with Fallout? Yep, we're just talking about it right now. All right, all right. What do you think about it, man? Um, we're talking about the ass thing, right? The ass thing? No, no, no we're talking about the lore of the show, how it ruined Fallout New Vegas. Oh, I haven't seen the show yet, but I do notice that it's being botted to oblivion. Like, every oh, yeah, single review, every single review is very well written. It's almost like it's, it's a professional person behind the account giving it glowing reviews. And I'm wondering, this is why I even came here. I wanted to ask you at Arch, is it really that good? No, it's awful. Nope. Hmm. The, the controversy involves uh, a content creator by the name of Mustafa. Um, that is a, an account that did a shit post and basically just added an ass to the, um, to the poster. And everyone on Twitter is now freaking out and saying, oh my god, it's a real woman, it's a human being. How can you, how can you modify her ass? How can you meme her without consent? I'm surprised you haven't seen it, because it's like... Oh no, I've it seen is. it. I've seen, yeah. I've seen you talk about it, and I've seen uh, Mutahar talk about it, yeah. And he says, this is what crippling porn addiction looks like. Yeah, I've seen this, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it, it's a small part of the larger Fallout story, where because like, like, the lore of, of New Vegas has been destroyed, basically. Uh, what happened with the Lord? Okay, T uh, TLDR. Um, did you did you play did you play New Vegas yes. back in the day? Okay, best, so you know best you, game, you, yeah, best Fallout game, yeah. Okay, so you, you know the conflict. Uh, in the in the Fallout show, um, they reveal that in the timeline, the capital of the NCR had been destroyed by a nuclear weapon four years before New Vegas happened. But why though? Service guarantees citizenship. Because they, they hate don't say. New Vegas. They don't. They don't say. Oh no, I, I the, the capital was, was destroyed. Okay, I, I'll tell you why the capital was destroyed. The capital okay. was destroyed because um, a man and a woman had an argument. The woman decided to kidnap the man's children and take them to Shady Sands with her lesbian lover. The man did not approve of having his children abducted and so followed them to take back his child. And in so doing, he also elected to nuke Shady Sands. Based. <laughs> yeah, but th that means that like there's uh, the, the the whole story of New Vegas is now doesn't make sense well, because if, if, if the if the NCR just lost its capital, why are they so prosperous and they're expanding outward into New Vegas territory and fighting with the Legion? I mean, do you think that the story writers thought about that, or is it like they will still keep New Vegas, but they they just don't think that the NCR loses prosperity by not having a capital? 
I don't know, man. I, mean, I, 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 I don't possible, think it is possible, I guess. Yeah, I mean, theoretically, it is possible that a city, uh, sorry, a country can lose its capital and still be prosperous. I mean, Japan, hey, right? After World War II. Wait, so. wait a second. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I didn't play through all the New Vegas DLCs, but wasn't there a DLC where you could actually choose to nuke the question. either the capital of the I NCR or the capital of the Legion? <laughs> I don't remember that. I, I, uh. I think there was... There was a, a choice to nuke uh, the original city in the first Fallout 3. I know that. The, yeah, the, I don't the remember, question. remember a choice Fire like that either. <laughs> yeah, no. No, hold on, hold on. Lonesome Road. At the end of Lonesome Road, you can choose certain locations to nuke. Service guarantees citizenship. Um... Okay. Yeah, you, you you can. Why why would you have the option of nuking a capital city in Lonesome Road if the capital is already gone four years ago? But maybe just that DLC is not canon, and they can maybe the show's it. not canon. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay, but like, do they actually say that New Vegas doesn't exist? Because maybe they will have New Vegas in the show. It's just like a different story. The, the no, New they, Vegas they is uh, a ruin. It's a ruined, yeah. Oh, it's just... they, they, they say yeah. that? Yes. Wow. Yep. Oh, and also Mr. House was part of the of everyone getting nuked. He was actually evil the whole time. He was in on it. Oh, okay. So, because I was thinking, like, maybe they don't have rights for that part of the story just because uh, it was a different studio that made it. So maybe it's not in the contract that they can talk about New Vegas. Very Someone much in the chat says, it. the Sh Shady Sands still exists in New Vegas because random NPCs talk about wanting to go back to Shady Sands. Oh, Go okay. back to a hole in the ground. <laughs> yeah, and you know what this is? They just they didn't know the lore and they didn't care. Probably. They just didn't give a shit. No, no, I, I think I they it. knew. I think they actually actively tried to destroy it. You think I, this is like I see we, we malice. Are... <laughs> you see malice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, ironically, Arch, I do think it's incompetence because usually the writers for these shows they don't give a shit about the lore and they genuinely yeah. don't know. Malice. So, so... Well, hold on. Do you, do you guys recall the Fallout 4 uh, drug controversy? No. No? Okay, so you know how there's a, the drug jet in the Fallout yes. lore? And it's made out of Brahmin fumes? Yeah. Is it, um, is it Brahmin fumes? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's Brahmin fumes, yeah. Okay. But um, but Brahmins didn't exist before before the bombs dropped. They're, they're two-headed yeah. cows. So yeah, yeah, th there was um, there's a vault in Fallout 4 that's packed with drugs. And you can find like uh, a shipping, a, a shipping uh, um, manifesto or something, or a manifest, or a manifesto. Yeah, a manifest. And it 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 lists off all the various drugs that are being shipped to the vault while the vault was still under construction, and it lists jet. Okay, so a, a drug that didn't exist before, yeah, yeah but before the the vault was being made. So someone actually tagged one of the writers. Uh, on Twitter, this is back in like 2016 or whatever, tags this guy on Twitter and says, hey, there's like a lore inconsistency here. And then the guy said, well, very clearly, they were still delivering drugs after the bombs fell. Obviously, you idiot. And everyone's like, that's fucking, that's, that's a dumb, like, that's a dumb excuse for this. And he says, listen, are you actually lore picking me with, with for, for over like, 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 like an, 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 an unrealistic game like Fallout? Are you that kind of nerd? And it's like, you're, you're the writer for Fallout yeah. 4 and you have no respect for the fucking property that you've worked on. Yeah, like, yeah. That, that, I, I can tell you this as a person who writes myself and I assume like Arch is also a writer for his universe. Like it, it happens, right? Like it happens, especially if you have like long dialogue trees and you have like uh, subplots and stuff, especially for like games small like ours. I can't imagine what it's like for a universe like Fola. But at least you need to be a man about it and admit it and be like, yeah, you know, it, we, we made a mistake. We're sorry. We didn't realize and that's that. Like you don't argue with the customer. Uh, like Peter Dinklage also said about uh, Game of Thrones. Oh my god, well, it's, it's, it's a show about dragons. Why do you care? And it's like, well, motherfucker, you're, you're an actor there. You know, it's how you put food on your table. Yeah. So, so there's the question. Why do you care? Okay, I won't care. I'll stop. I'll stop watching the show. I'll stop yeah. playing the game. Fuck you. Yeah. It's like literally when people say, why do you care? And, and that's what is happening now. People just don't care anymore and you're getting fired. Like, all the studios yep. are laying off people because you didn't want us to care. And then now, now we don't. Yep. Malice. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah uh, re re regarding the whole ass thing, um, 
I think I think with, with with what you specifically came in for, V, that's from yeah, game characters AI. That's actually an AI account that just makes characters attractive. You can like yeah, give them a, a character. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shit post. It's a shit post. If the ass was Photoshop, they would have the same answer. They they just do not like any type of feminine feature added into the media. That, to, to me, I, I will say it, okay? It, to me, it looks like this is the transgender suffrage movement, right? Well, where they want every single female character to look androgynous. They want body type A, body type B, pronouns everywhere. And if you yeah, go against the, the suffrage movement, Fire which is being is done, <laughs> I, I wouldn't say subvertedly, but it's kind of like you're not supposed to talk about it. Like you're supposed to look at the uh, manja industrial complex adding, uh, you know, <laughs> all, all, all of these... Uh, California is with look characters in every single video game and you're not supposed to complain you're supposed to say no they're beautiful they're great uh meanwhile the male characters they look like porn actors they're like every single male character is like buffed nice chest you know Kratos look alike and you notice the disparaging to the, to the point where it's so fucking obvious that people are beaming it and this is why whenever you add like a feminine feature on one of these characters uh you get the pronoun pushers on Twitter freaking out it's it, it's because they do not like they know what's going on and they're looking for like any excuse to make you to shut up. Here's the worst part about it, and I know that you you two aren't going to agree with me, but that's fine. The worst part about it is that you can actually have attractive androgynous characters, but you need to have one of them. All right, you need to have like a cast of beautiful masculine characters and a cast of beautiful feminine characters and then you can have like one pretty boy or something or like no, one tomboy no, you know what i, I mean yeah, you can't yeah, make no. every single girl to have like you can't make them all androgynous like and andro being androgynous can be beautiful but it has to be rare because no, I agree. one I agree. It, it, it makes it more special and two because it actually is rare in real life yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. But the thing is, like, the benchmark is now the Californian man joint industrial complex. Like, every mm -hmm. single female character needs to have short hair or have shaven head, no ass, broad shoulders, the man jaw, you know, the resting bitch face. There is not, not a single female character that I can think of that came out in the last five years. Please give me examples if I'm wrong. That has these size breasts. Solar blade, that's it. <laughs> well, that's not a Western, that's actually, not a Western actually, mm. yeah. I can, Go I on. can destroy, I can destroy V here. Go for it. Go for it. I can destroy V here with another of uh, today's topics. Here, let me put this in the link channel. Heresy is the question. Fire is the answer. You see the fat, oh, queer, brown woman with the mechanical legs there. Let me let me put my glasses. I don't think those are D sized breasts. Oh, I think they're, they're, they're 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 relatively sizable. I guess. All right. Fine. Here you go. She's, she's also overweight though. That's kind of. Yeah, but he oh, didn't he didn't that add in a qualifier cheating? there. Yeah, but he didn't qualify. He didn't. No, it's fine. It's fine. I'll take the L. I do gotta say, you know that androgynous looking white haired lady. Yeah, that one is hot. Uh, yeah, she's trans. Yeah, but but they they made her hot. Specifically because it's trans. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, right, like that. That's why so the trans character isn't fat. Or you know, having like the California uh, Innsmouth bus shaved haircut. It's Here, because me, like uh... they they wanted yeah. Um, yeah. But the thing is, I like the the prosthetic legs. And, and what what I I would say is that if you were to show this like five years ago, they they would get angry because you're mocking their ideology. Right, like when Anita Sarkeesian was like, oh, we need inclusivity and stuff. If you showed her like this poster, she would get upset because you're making fun of her ideology. You're mocking like, no, this is obviously not what she means. This is not. And yet, here we have it. Here it is. And if you don't like it, they will attack you and they will be angry because like, why are you disparaging? Well, there, the well, there, there seems to be like a, a cycle that this goes through with left-leaning people. Where mm -hmm. we all recall Anita Sarkeesian, you know, freaking out over Bayonetta, right? Yeah. For being over-sexualized. Yeah. And now Bayonetta is considered this queer icon. Yes. And for, for, for being how over-the-top campy yes. she is. Same with 2B. Yeah. yeah, same with 2B. Yeah. yeah, 2B is now going through the same kind of whitewashing where she was shit on back when the game came out in 2017. Uh, near Automata, because she was, you know, male gaze, yeah. too sexual, and now it's like, oh my god, she's a queer icon. Here, do you want to know? Here, chat, chat, listen. 
Do you want to know why these characters get whitewashed from being, you know, male gays, guys are wanking off to it, it's problematic, into queer icons that are strong and powerful? It's because enough porn of them has been created where they have dicks. That's it. All right. I don't know. I, I, I 100%. Think more, no, I think an entire like... generation of gooners are out there like masturbating to to be with a giant cock. Someone yeah, added it no, in Blender sure, or whatever. But I, yeah, yeah, but I don't think I don't think that's it. I, I think it's just like it's so popular and ingrained that it's difficult to deny that it wasn't a success. Like when it's coming out, they can still hope, oh, well, this game will fail. It will not get any attraction. And, and when it does... That's when they get upset. Now, with Bayonetta, I noticed that they replaced her. Like, her daughter uh, is now, you know, the, the manjaw Californian Innsbruck look. Well, she wasn't. She, was, she didn't have a manjaw. She didn't have a manjaw. I played that she, game. She, she has the haircut, though. She's got, she like, does, the, yes. Yeah. But here's the thing, though. Um, she actually, like, did you play Bayonetta 3? Does God know? I fucking okay. respect myself. Why would I give money to the small titty okay, committee? Hold I, on. No. No, no, I get it. I get it. But here's the thing. They actually did a good job with her character because, well, hear me out, hear me out, because she's not just an avatar of representation that exists to be this special snowflake and then everything goes her way. Like she actually has a character arc and she loses a whole bunch and she grows and gets stronger. Like she's actually an interesting character. Yeah, Fire one question. Is what, what is yeah. the game called, Dev? What is the game called? Bayonetta, yes. Right. What, what happens with Bayonetta in part three? Um, She's, she's not dead because there's multiple of them. Uh -huh. There's multiple Bayonetta's. There's, there's like timelines going yeah. on. And, and Bayonetta 4, who will I play as? Will I play as Bayonetta or her daughter? Honestly, probably both, I think. Mm. I, yeah. I heard that the studio developer said that you're not going to be playable to play Bayonetta anymore. Like, she's replaced. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. But, but here's the thing, though. The, here, here's the thing. Um, her storyline... I mean, you, you've watched Dragon Ball Z, obviously, I think. So yeah. her, her storyline is basically the same storyline as Trunks. Where she comes from, like a ruined future and she comes back in, in time to like meet her parents and try to save the day, right? And that's a very interesting storyline, and they did it well. So she she's like the daughter of an alternate Bayonetta from a ruined future, and she's come back to try and to, to try and help. Yeah, but I like big fat tits and guns and and that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I guns, get it, I get it. But yeah, yeah, but in terms uh, of the plot of the game, it actually yeah. works really well, and she's, and she's a good character for it. I don't play Apologia. Bayonetta for the plot, Dev. Yeah, I do, and I have. <laughs> oh. You know, I mean, I, I guess you're going to have to purchase all the merchandise and buy the game five times to make up for the lost sales as well. Uh, no, now, I'm now, sure talking that about... I don't care that much. <laughs> well, I see. Well, it's it's good that they're catering to you then. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to go back to Tomb Raider a little bit. And notice how Tomb Raider is in the background. Like, like on the poster that's called Tomb Raider, she is just, by the way, she exists somewhere. Her tits have gotten cancer. Like, you can see that she she's, uh, you know, operated. She did surgery because now she's got, like, B-sized breasts. Uh, and, and she's in the background somewhere. And in the forefront is the diversity crew. Well, that's because it's not about her anymore. She's obviously been replaced as the main character. Obviously. Yes. Unavoidably. Yes. Yes. Uh, and it's also, she's not a Tomb Raider anymore. She's a yes. truth seeker. And she's yes. not there to find a... Uh, Artifacts, she's there to solve colonialism and all of the damage yeah. that colonialism has done. See, this is the problem when they say, uh, how are video games anti-woke? And it's like, well, you're not going to have like a character just go on a pedestal and start shitting about white people. But you can see the developers implying that for some reason what Lara Croft is doing is wrong. Lara did absolutely fucking literally nothing wrong. 100% everything she did is justifiable. Uh... And, and by the way, I, I, I watched this documentary with a politician from Egypt, and he was basically saying how he is happy that the British Empire came and took all these monuments and all these things that were <laughs> just... Yeah, like they were considered just like stones gathering dust. Like people didn't put any value into them. So now that they're taken in the British Museum in London and the entire world got to see them because like London was the central hub where you had people from all over the world going in. And they're like, oh, wow, this is so fucking cool. Let's travel to Egypt. And it actually brought tourism to Egypt. It brought money in, right? And, and now people go to Egypt to see the fucking pyramids, something that wouldn't have happened if the British Empire didn't do the PR and the publicity required, you know, to, to highlight these things. So basically so when they're crying about, oh, my God, Indiana Jones is stealing these artifacts, he's taking them from tombs that no one actually goes there. Like, no one cares about them, right? And he's not taking it from himself. He's putting it in a museum to highlight the importance of the culture 
where, where he got the artifact from. And it's the same what Lara Croft is doing. Yeah. Well, did you hear the story of uh, one of the museums was con was convinced to give some of the artifacts back? So, so they gave them back to the government of whatever country in Africa they took them from. And they immediately turned around and sold them. Well, yeah. Just got a bunch of money out of it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not shocking, right? But, but the thing is, from what I know, Egypt isn't trying... Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, Egypt isn't asking the British government to return the artifacts, right? Like, they're, they're happy with the arrangement because they're getting tourism and they're getting a lot of cash from it. Um, and, and you look at what ISIS is doing in Syria. Like, they're destroying the artifacts. There, there's videos with ISIS with hammers like, going into these things because they consider them heretical. They're, like, smashing the... Uh, the the artwork and stuff that was built by people from thousands of years in the past. It's like, yep. well, do social justice activists even know that this is happening? Like, are they even aware of the context, or is it just like, no, white man bad, colonialism bad, white man bad, that's colonialism is, yeah. bad? Yep, that's what it is. Lara Croft evil privilege. Yep, that's pretty much what it is. I completely agree. Um, what you said earlier, V. Uh, like, remember when there was the um. Bayonetta being like whitewashed over 10, 15 years and then 2B. And yeah, yeah. What, what basically happens is it's it's initially unpopular with left wingers. But then as soon as the, the game itself achieves some sort of cultural status, then they want to claim it as theirs. Like, oh, this is actually yes. for us. It's actually about. That's what I fucking yeah. said, them. No, no, this is literally no, 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 my no. argument. You said no. it's the dick. I don't think no, he's the dick. I don't no, think hold on, so. Hold on, V. v, v I, mean, I, th I think it's both, frankly. I think it's both. But hear me out. I, I'm, I'm repeating your argument for, to just make a point, though. Because... um. Basically, I think left wingers view media as anything that's good has to be left wing because only left wingers can create art because right wingers are like old and stuffy and they don't have any creative spirit yeah, and yeah, et cetera, no, et cetera. Right? Yeah, yeah. Let, yeah. Let, let me so, let me say this, right? If Stellar Blade okay. if Stellar Blade doesn't have a single porn with it where Eve has a cock, there's not of the internet, the left will still co op Stellar Blade. In like ten years, yeah, I think they'll try to. Yeah, I think so. So, so it's not the dick, Dev. It's not the dick. I'm it's telling you. It's partially the dick for it's sure. It's not. Absolutely. It, it is not. It's not. It's not. It's not. Because this is a strategy. You, Dev. You keep giving them the fucking benefit of that. You keep no, no, thinking no, no, they no, can no, no. behave in an acceptable yeah, way. They on. cannot. It is nothing but politics. The activist cannot recognize anything superior to his politics. Nothing. It is all a grift. Oh, and so I hold on. Prove it. I, just I, wait, just I, wait. No, you don't, you don't got to prove it because I already agree with you. And I, and I want to tell right. you why I already agree with you. Okay, so. Okay. You, do you, then why um, did you disagree with me if you agree with me? I didn't. V, no, okay, you, v, you, you always think talk. that I'm disagreeing with you. I almost never am. This God damn it. Talk, and I said it's not. That's a disagreement the then. Answer. I said it's both. Yeah, but I, okay, yeah. then we disagree because I think it's only one. Okay, fine, fine. But hear me out. Okay, so a few days ago, I posted in our in our super secret chat my, um, my post where I wanted to outline the the conservative themes of the Legend of Zelda games, right? And yeah. I was like, well, here, if, if I'm going to put on the the leftist media literacy cap and analyze for for you know politics in video games, Legend of Zelda is very right wing. Uh, it's, not, it's, it's not very right wing; it's somewhat right wing. And so I outlined in this in this big long leftist meme of an essay how the Legend of Zelda is right leaning in its political views. Um, and I, I put that on the internet, and like it was, a, you know, it, it, it popped off slightly. I think I had like a hundred retweets or something, so that's fine. Um, but I noticed all the left wingers who were commenting on it; they were they were massively disagreeing with each other. But they were, but they were like, first of all, they were all very angry and very rabid that I even did this sort of thing. But half of them were saying, "This guy's an idiot. He doesn't understand politics. He doesn't understand art. Art is left wing. He doesn't understand Zelda. Very clearly, Zelda's for us and not for you, you know, Gamergate man, baby chuds." That was one half of the leftist take. Harry's the other half question. of the leftist take is Fire that is this guy's answer. completely right, and Zelda sucks, and is one of the worst games ever made. And I'm just sitting here thinking, like, you guys. It, you actually think that you're going to take one of the most beloved, most famous Harrison. franchises Harrison. in video games Fire of all time <laughs> and claim that it's bad because your politics don't align with it. It's it's the height of fucking delusion for these people. But I oh, give another argument, right? Like they okay. can like something and still claim they hate it. Um, there's two examples of this. The first one is the Hogwarts game. Uh, everyone, moderator on Reset Era, if you say anything positive about the Hogwarts game, we're going to ban your fucking ass. And not only 
do people point out that the mods were playing the game on stream, but they also took money from the game to advertise it on Reset Era. So you couldn't say anything positive about it, but you got to see commercials for the game in the banners of the website. So that's one of it. The second one is when Vosh goes around, his, his standing against Lolly, he's like, oh, Lolly is for Nazis. This is why Nazis like anime. Hitler himself was a Lolly connoisseur. Oh, blah, blah, blah. And then he's got it on his PC. So my point is, like, they may say they hate to be, but they, they, they would still like it. So so even if even if you are right, you know, you put on a dick on to be, and all of a sudden, uh, Joe Biden and, and Nancy Pelosi like to be, that doesn't mean that they would necessarily go around and say they like it unless it was strategically advantageous for them to do so. Sure, sure. I just think that some people's politics are heavily influenced by what they're attracted to and what they jerk off to. Yeah, but, but, but I just gave you Vosh as an example. He jerks off to it, and he in public, he will say, Oh, it's despicable. It is It is the same as child pornography. <laughs> and, and on his hold on, hold on, drive, hold on, he's got... Hold on. <laughs> no, I get it, I get it. But here's the counterpoint, V, okay? All right, all right. You talk about what you jerk off to all the time, and that's almost all of your political takes is whether or not the girl has big tits. Yes, but I'm not a leftist. And by the way, I gotta <laughs> say, you know what's fascinating about me? Back in the day, when literally every single female character had big tits, I was actually bored by that. And I was like, what, why is every single female character like a porn Service star? Guaranteed the point isn't whether or not women have big tits. It's like, why is it literally everywhere the same shit? Why is it this benchmark that every single character needs to have the exact same body type? It's yeah, boring as a story. I... It, it, it's like, look, <clears throat> when you had all those zombie movies, I was like, oh my fucking God, can we get something else? I'm so fucking bored. I have zombie movies everywhere. Now you have superhero movies everywhere. And I'm like, you know what? A zombie movie wouldn't be that bad. It's just like eating your favorite food every single day. It's like the same type of food every single day. You get bored of it. You want something new. No, I agree. I agree. Like, I, I mean, this is one of the reasons why I do prefer Japanese games, because if there's like multiple women in the same game, they're all going to be like different body types. You got like short girls and tall girls. You got yeah. buff girls. You got skinny girls, girls with big tits, girls with small tits, like different hair colors, different styles. Like you, you got like a smorgasbord of women, basically. That, well, it's also the writing. My God, like there, there, there's yeah, this yeah, writing's uh, better game. too. Yeah, yeah. There's this video game DK, which is the same company that made Stellar Blade, and I, I talked about it. Like they have this event where you got like two cheerleading girls, and I talked about it, and everyone is upset that I spoiled the fucking cheerleading event. And it's like it's, it's a story about cheerleading, but then I thought it's like that story about two girls wanting to win a cheerleading competition is more interesting than anything that Ubisoft and Sweet Baby combined can write in the last five fucking years. Like, that story <laughs> has more emotion in it, and, and, and you genuinely give a shit whether or not those two chickas are going to win that cheerleading competition that you get invested, and you want to come home when the next patch drops to see what happens. And when I spoiled it, I actually feel bad because a lot of people were calling me a piece of shit. It's like, V, I wanted to know. Are they going to win the cheerleading event? And you know what? They didn't fucking win. They didn't fucking they, win. And they you just spoiled so it hard. again. Yes, but they worked so hard, Dev. They worked so hard to win, and they did it. And it was making me feel something. And I was thinking, when is the last time Ubisoft actually made you feel something? When is the last time you played a Ubisoft game and you felt sadness, or you felt happiness, or joy, or anything? You don't feel shit when you play these AAA games. So you're, Hold you're on, impressed. I'll give you one. I'll give you one give example. Me, for give, Ubisoft. Me, give me a fucking okay? one. Okay. Yeah, I, I, know, so, I know one. Let's see if it's the same. Okay. Ubisoft. So, it has to be Ubisoft. Yeah, has to be Ubisoft. Okay. It has to be Ubisoft, so, yes. Ubisoft was contracted to make a Nintendo game, and they made right. Mario Mario with Rabbids, and it was like an okay game. What did you feel while playing it? Oh, it was fun. Like, it was, it was, there, was, there was joy there, for sure. It was a fun game. But here's the, the thing. Game. I think they can only do that because they had, like, Nintendo helping them. The only game that I actually made and I felt was Prince of Persia. It's like, the dagger! He must not get the dagger! And, and the prince just, like, catches the dagger. I actually felt something. And that was, like, what, like, 20 years ago? Yeah. Oh, like, the only time maybe you saw yeah. you feel something, yeah. Well, I feel something when I look at this iteration of Tomb Raider. What did you feel? <laughs> what do you disgust, feel? anger, hatred? See, because I, see, I have Dev is you. Dev is wrong. Dev is so very wrong because Dev continuously attributes positive intentions 
to the progressive. He thinks they're doing this because oh, they like it. Don't just put words in my mouth. He thinks they're doing it because there's something positive or there's but something innocent. Up. No, it is every single bit of it is malice. All of oh, no. it is malice. No, not all. All of no, it you, you, is no, 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 no. malice. This, just wait, just wait, see? just let you're me right, say it. Arch. Okay, you're right. You're right. He, he says on, not all on. of it. Yes. Yes. There, there not is, all of it. No. All of it. All of it. You know, there is a dial. Some of it is malice. A lot of it is malice. Not all of it is malice. All of it is malice. It is not all of it. No. It is. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. It is not one hundred percent malice from every single individual who's doing this stuff. It is I, not. I will say, all right, let, let me put it this Absolutely way. Absolutely, it not, is. It, it is 100% malice. No, 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 Arch, I disagree. It's 110 fucking percent so that we can <laughs> even adjust for that little error that comes up with the statistics. There is nothing, there is no individual in Service this dev that is not malicious. It's it's like the Nazis dev. It's like the fucking Nazis at the Nuremberg Trials. If they're just following orders, they're still doing the crimes against gamers. Yeah. It is it is <laughs> the crime it's all against malice gamers. because <laughs> this is Fire not is organic. <laughs> None of these people have come to this conclusion by themselves. This is all cultural capture. All of this is the doctrine. All of this is ideology. That is why it is all malice. Wait, hold on! Then, wait, no, no, wait, no! Wait, wait, wait no, just a fucking no, second. Okay, first of all, there's no, one guy. When, there's one idiot in the chat who's like, "Dev must oversimplify the argument." No, no, I'm actually making the argument for nuance, not oversimplification. When you say it's all malice, that is oversimplifying it. No, there's a lot of malice. There's a lot of other things. It that is, is. It is. That is slam dunk. So, exactly what it okay, is. Hold on, hold on. Are you so you're saying that there's not a single person involved in any of this that is not malicious? They're just highly incompetent. None no, of yes, them. They're just one, useful not idiots. Hashtag they are just hashtag useful hashtag idiots. They are all ideologically conquered. They don't even know what they're doing, and that is malice. Well, they are uneducated well, tarts. The, the last conversation that we had, the three of us had about ideology, you guys took the opposite position, where you said that none of them were ideologically conquered. They are, in fact, grifters who simply want to enrich yes. themselves. Yes, they and are. The, I, no, 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 no. That is the These same are, thing. That is the exact same thing. No, it's not. These are complete thing. opposite positions. These no. are complete opposite positions. No, no. Yes. Is, yes. It, it is the exact same thing, because no, none of not. them are ideologues. They are all activists. None of these understand what they're talking about. None of these have read the theory. None of this understands the end goal of any of this. They are all ideologically conquered. That is why it's malicious. And at the end of the day, why even make the distinction? If I'm at an evangelical village and every single person is an evangelical, even if they believe or don't believe in God, as long as they're like behaving in the evangelical way and they judge you based on their evangelical standards, does it really matter if they believe or not? I don't fucking care that they're acting that the, way, right? The, I make what? the distinction because it's true. Okay. Why would it matter if they're ruining Tomb Heresy Raider because they're question. grifters or Fire they're ruining the Tomb answer. Raider because they genuinely believe the ideological bullshit? At the there end of the no day, difference. Tomb Raider is ruined. Yeah, Tomb Raider is ruined. Well, at the end of the day, Tomb Raider is ruined, yes. Yes. But if, but hold on, if they're doing it for different reasons, you can approach them differently. Ignorance the is not no, 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 an no. excuse. <laughs> okay, here, let me put it this way, okay? If you have somebody who is incompetent, but does not believe in the ideology, they just march forward, how do you deal with them? You just have this, to fire uh, them. I would, I would just wait, no, let, I, that, well, well, fire them, because... Okay, no, go, go ahead. Go, no. on. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Disgust is my sword. Ignorance is my shield. That's how I deal Hatred with Hatred is my armor. <laughs> Literally. We have long. We have long passed past the point of being like, oh, they're just a little retarded. If we just explain it to them, we we are long past Sargon in that, 2014. Not... Like, if I can just sit down and speak to Anita Sarkeesian, I can make her understand. No, Dev. No. I'm not, say, I'm, even say, I'm not even saying that. I'm not even saying that. Okay. V, V, V. So, V, we, we yeah. mentioned we talked about this a few days ago privately, okay. and you said yeah. you, you said something like, if you had the team that made Spider-Man Two, but they weren't being suppressed by ideologues at the top, you could have them make a truly excellent game because they do have talent. A good game, yes. Yes. So yes. that does, at, at the very least, 
that proves that you don't believe it is 100% malice because those people you said are being suppressed by other people. They could make a game that does not have the California man jaw, but they're being forced by someone else not to. So very clearly, not everyone in these institutions, as you said, is guilty of the same thing. I differentiate I not between Heinrich Himmler and the Waffen yeah, SS soldier I, I, who I, shot the Jews. I, I don't think you understand <laughs> our point, though. It, it's okay, tell, not, tell it to me. Right. When, when you're looking at the end product, it's irrelevant. How many people at the company are genuinely believers, how many are grifters, and who are just following orders? At the end of the day, the company is tainted. I do not expect that these <laughs> companies are ever going to produce a good video game again. I would be shocked, shocked, I tell you, if Ubisoft ever makes a game like Stellar Blade. Uh, or if Blizzard ever makes a game as good as Warcraft 3. With, with Jaina sure, yeah. having magical big tits and, and having like dragon aspect with big fat ass. I'll be like, holy shit, you know, like Blizzard is back. It's not going to happen. Never going to happen. Okay, so V, if I like wave the magic wand, and yes. put you in charge of the studio that made uh, Spider-Man 2, okay? Now now you're in charge of the whole thing, all right? Would you fire every single person, or would you fire the ideologues and keep the people who can actually make the game? It would be very difficult for several reasons. Uh, first of all, I don't know Fire if the studio the <laughs> would even be able to survive without the SG funding, because you can't just get bankrupt unless you, you know, keep catering to the activists. Secondly, if you start firing people, you may get lawsuits for discrimination there. But th th those are difficult to get in court. Even if you win them, they're very costly. So most of the time okay. you settle. How, how about then, this? When, then, when, when the contract runs up, just don't resign them. <laughs> I mean, look at Elon Musk, right? He takes over Twitter. 80% of the staff quits. Mm -hmm. so, so I don't even know if they would want to. But like assuming that I could mind control them and get them to work <laughs> under me and, and, and manage to somehow... Silence all the activists, right? Like you brainwash them and it's just their skill. They're like robots, you know? Like if an artist knows how to draw, he Service just draws what you ask him to draw. Then yeah, I, I think I could make a good game, yes. Okay. You but, see, but I, it would I, be I like, think the like, reason... Like so many conditions, like I would require supernatural <laughs> forces to be at work in order for me to turn so, the studio around. So here's the thing. I think the reason why I have a, a different perspective, and it's not that different at the end of the day, frankly. We're arguing over minutiae here. We all we all generally are pointed in the same direction. Um, I think the reason that I have a different perspective is because I talked to that guy who made Saints Row, and he, he made it very clear to me that it's not like the entire studio was ideologically captured. All right. A lot of people that were, were there, they were uh, they were doing the, the work that they could, but they weren't given enough resources. They weren't given enough time. And also they uh, a lot of the let's say a lot of the non woke ideas or a lot of the stuff that would fix the woke ideas was all shot down by people above them. Right. Yeah, but Dev, so, like the hype, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. But like yeah. the hypothetical would be if you could actually get the people to do what you want, like that was my statement. Right. If I could get the artist to actually draw what I ask him using his skills, then yes. But that would never happen because that artist would probably start complaining and saying, oh, misogyny this, misogyny that. You would have middle management doing walkouts and organizing protests. Like we saw this with Netflix, what happened when they brought Dave Chappelle. I I'm pretty sure like there are people at Netflix that, you know, are like you say, they're not woke. And but the middle management is and, and they will do walkouts. They will do protests. They will ruin your brand. I'm pretty sure there were Service negotiations behind the scene in order to increase their wage and make them to shut up and promise them, okay, Dave Chappelle is the only one. We're not going to get another. Like, it, it, it's this is what I mean that these companies will not be able to turn around. You you will not see Netflix just do good movies in the future, unless they start doing like Korean shit, and, and you know drop the American stuff because they they can't help with us. They would race swap. The moment they touch something, they would race swap. If they make a documentary about your mom, Dev, they will fucking race swap her. <laughs> so here's the thing I I mean I understand everything you're saying um, I'm not entirely sure though and here's why here's why I do think a lot of the woke stuff a lot of the diversity stuff is being rolled back we've already seen it not like you, you can't cancel someone online the way that you could five years ago right like you could you could whip up incredible cancel mobs and like destroy people's people's livelihoods online you can't do that now people just don't give a shit anymore like they're done with it uh, it the... depends with what though like I, I think that wokeness has like different waves like back then it was muslims then it was homosexuals now it's sure, sure yeah there's and right so like if, if you go online and you start ranting about trans people and shit you can get canceled 
Yeah, but but what what I mean though is a lot of this stuff is being rolled back, and now that uh you know these various shows are not bringing in numbers, the movies aren't bringing in numbers, the games aren't really bringing in numbers either. There will be changes. You know, it's. It, I don't think it's one of these things it, where like the screeching activists that are in so middle management or the consultants, yeah. their their time is running out. Right, their their power is. Yeah, declining you're, you're right, right but it's not changes that like Ubisoft will start making good games. It's that Double A is going to rise. So you know, Hell Divers is so going to probably make a franchise. You're probably going to get uh, DK, right? Like DK is making Stellar Blade. I mean, the the way they funded Stellar Blade is because DK managed to make money. Uh, so Stellar Blade is going to make a franchise. Like you, you're going to see like upstarting. Um, companies just just manage to to make more stuff. Uh, Fear and Hunger is another example of an indie game. Um, yeah. But yep. but like double like triple like I, I I think they're going to just move to phone games or they're just going to die off. Like like in the future, you you may just see like all these studios just starting to make like either uh, casino games for China or they're going to start uh, going into the phone gaming. Like we we see Mortal Kombat expanding into that. I, I, I don't think that they're going to make good AAA games in the future. They just can't. And they can't because of ideological restraint, not that they don't have the talent. I mean, maybe, maybe. Uh, it, it, and people, people in the chat are saying bridge. Like, oh, bridge. They're, they're, no. Uh, everyone who's worrying about bridge, I wouldn't worry about it. It's the same rebranded shit. They're going to try and push it. It's going to fail. And you want to know why it's going to fail? Because people at the top who actually only just care about money, they are actually finally waking up. And they're seeing that all this stuff they've been making for the past five years, it's not making them any fucking money. All right? It's, it's, this is on its way out. All right? It, now, I, that doesn't mean that we should relax. We shouldn't be like, you know, okay, everything's fine now, guys. It's all fixed. No, it's not. Obviously not all fixed. But, like, I, I, this, this black pill... That I see everyone taking right now. This doomerism, I think, is not warranted because we are actually winning the culture war right now. You should debate Kirsha on this. Why? Because she is the doomerism when it comes to bridge. Okay. I want to see you handle her. V? Yes. Go on, Dev. <laughs> that, was, that was very bizarre, Dev. It was like me. <laughs> Dev's already embroiled in drama with Kirsha because Dev cannot be around another person for more than two seconds without starting drama with them. He's he's incapable. He, he is a drama magnet, it is true. He is. There is very little doubt about this. To be mm -hmm. fair, Kirsha is a drama magnet too, so they're like uh, two sides of the same coin, we can say. One likes bridge, the other one doesn't. Two drama horse, When the one fuck room. did I? Well, no, sh shut shut up for a minute. When did I ever say that I like bridge, V? Sorry, my bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. One is afraid of bridge, the other one isn't. No, I'm not afraid of bridge at all. No. But yeah, that's Honestly, I I, th I think it's just gonna be another one of these initiatives that fucking goes nowhere and does nothing and like it, it's bad. Obviously, I'm not saying that it, I'm not, it's just it's in, it's it's already impotent. Like it's not going anywhere. It's not doing my, anything. My my take is that the whole diversity stuff is here for at least five more years. You think so? Yeah, hundred percent. I, I think it's, it's too... like you know you know what here if we're just talking about because it's already changing in TV and in um and in movies. It's slow, but it's but it's happening. Um, if you if you look at games. I think Stellar Blade will be the specific tipping point in games. Like if Stellar, like Hogwarts helped a whole bunch, but if Stel if Stel if uh, Stellar Blade sells millions and millions of copies, as all these other AAA games just like flop, that will be the point where people uh, at the higher ups at these companies start saying, "Okay, why is it that no one's buying our fucking games?" And they're gonna no, they're gonna I, look I, over I, at Stellar I, Blade I, and they're gonna be I, like, "Oh, look, look at look at like twenty million sales or something. Look at all this fucking money they're raking in," and they're gonna realize, yeah. Yeah, but that's not what they're saying. What they're saying is uh, AAA is too risky, too volatile. We're going to go to fun games. That's literally what they're saying right now. Yes, and I mean, Stellar Blade will not sell millions. Stellar Blade will probably be a financial flop. You think uh, so? Actually, yep. I don't know. Actually, it was put I, I, on fucking PlayStation. PlayStation hates that type of games. A lot of people I, say that they're going to buy it. Um, we'll see. We will see. I will say this, Arch. Uh, the demo for Stellar Blade had 300,000 people playing. That is fucking massive. 300,000 people is nothing. 
No, as on a PS5 demo, though. On, on PS5, on PS5 yeah. it's as a something, demo. but it is nothing. It's a free product given out for no cost on a game with an, with enormous buzz around it. Only three hundred thousand people played it. Yes, but like most demos on PlayStation, do not get these numbers out. Probably not. Yeah, yeah. So this is why so, it's massive. L- let's say that they have the usual one year exclusivity on PS5 because yeah. that that happens. Yeah. I mean, I think once it drops on the other systems and on PC, it'll um, it'll probably blow up, I think. I hope so. I'm just not sure so it will. Take into account that it's also the merchandise they're selling, because it's not just the game itself. Like, they made the Eve statue, which costs like $100, and I think it already sold out. So they're also Jesus. making money. F- yeah, they're making money from merch and stuff. So it's not just the game. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I see, here's the thing. I know I know the chat, you know, always laughs whenever I say this, but it's the truth. We actually do believe most of the same thing. We actually are aligned in the same direction. I'm just a lot more optimistic about the future than you guys are, I think. You're a lot more blue eyed and naive. It certainly is true, Dev. Anyway, I need to do a rags and bounce, so thanks for having me, Arch. And uh was nice talking to you, Dev. Yeah, see you later, man. Have fun. So on specifically the the Tomb Raider thing here as well yes um heresy is the question this too is kind of like the the big thing here this is the everything is political thing this there's something i'm doing a video on right now everything is political is not an honest observation it is merely another politicized tool because once everything becomes political that is actually the thin wedge that opens the door because leftism cannot exist in a politically neutral climate nor can it exist in a climate where political reality exists as in common sense it must be able to subvert it and it must be able to change it at every level for leftism to thrive that's why Tomb Raider is now the complete Heresy package. Is the Lara Fire Croft is the has had her tits <laughs> made smaller. There is a trans character called The Changed. There is the a cha- <laughs> there's a <laughs> fat really? black disabled woman with her bow. And the only other female is a masculine, no tits, uh, sharp faced, resting bitch face female. And the only male is an enormous indigenous so native islander, a Maui dude, who's like, yeah, you know, I come from Hawaii. That's why I'm in uh, Africa, stealing shit. Hmm. So this here's the thing about it's... about small tits, oh, small tits so tomb raider. Right? Okay. Malice. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Malice. I think... I think they made her tits small like over 10 years ago. And even back then, people were complaining. But it was one of those things where it's like, you know, basically the, the left had a lot more power back back when, uh, what was it, Rise of the Tomb Raider ever came out? Where, where, there, there, is, is Rise and Shadow were the two new, like, Uncharted-style Tomb Raider games. And um, they made her tits smaller in those ones. And gamers complained, but gamers had a lot less power than they do now. And leftists had a lot more power than they do now. So it basically went through, and it just became the new thing. But also, those games were were generally liked because they were otherwise, aside from smaller boobs, like they were actually okay games. The modern Tomb Raiders are garbage. Modern Tomb Raider, <laughs> ugly, beaten up, abused woman covered in dirt, deeply unattractive, tiny little titties. Old school Tomb Raider, Angelina Jolie, at the height <laughs> of her cup size. Yep. Wearing the Listen, classic outfit, the classic guns, and hey, you know what? The movies were kind of trash from a storytelling perspective, but everything else was pretty amazing. Yep, I I agree with you. I loved I loved those movies back back in the day. But um, no, I and I know people in the chat are saying Dev is wrong. They, they, no one liked those. Yes, they did. I remember those uh, those games being well reviewed and also well liked by gamers. Like, aside from the small boobs, you know, people liked the Uncharted style Tomb Raider where it was more story focused. And but here's the thing: that was kind of the peak of those games, right? Like, un, you know, Tomb Raider and Uncharted and Last of Us. Those games they were very popular in the late, in the mid to late 2010s. They're not really popular now. 
And like I like I don't think if you made another one of those, or if you made like a Last of Us Part Three or something, I don't think it would be that popular. But back then, people liked them. Um, and also, Arch, I just I I kind of disagree with you, and let me just show you why, okay? Here. So malice. Hold on. You and I already agree on the small boobs, okay? So let, let's put that point malice. aside. Let's put that point aside. But when you see this version of Tomb Raider. Where it looks like, you know, Lara Croft's gone through hell, and oh, yes, she's dirty, and she's bleeding. that's the one bleeding. in which she was raped by, like, 17 guys. I remember that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But the point is, not is that I don't... When, when you say, like, she, you know, it's she's dirty, therefore the game is bad. I don't yep. buy that at all. Nope. No, no, no. I think that's fine. Nope. You can have, like, an action girl who goes to a temple and gets, like, bruised and bloodied and is covered in dirt and is, like, going through an ordeal. That's fine, man. Nope. That's part of the story. Nope. Yes. Nope. Yes. Nope. You, okay. Ro Rosa in the chat is like, she's hot. Yes, she is. I, I prefer bigger boobs, but yeah, she's still pretty hot. No, Dev. Because at the end of the day, all the modern Tomb Raiders was. It's a little bit of a fetish fantasy there. Oh, hey, Angelina Jolie made a pretty good Tomb Raider. What about this Lara Croft character? How can we ruin her? Oh, I know. Mm, gang rape. Mm, yes, dirty. Yes, outcast. She's a classic, she's a classy British Tomb Raider. She uncovers ancient, mysterious things like the, the early Indiana Jones. She isn't a rolling around in the mud realistic type of character. She's the character that picks up the stupid little golden monkey statue and here's a click as 5,000 ton of boulder begins rolling down a ridiculous ramp as super intricate ancient mechanism with gears and wheels and pulleys and levers operate in the background. <laughs> the chat is actually surprisingly split between us this time. Chat, I will burn every last one of you. <laughs> listen, listen, Arch, you have to understand flat is justice. Oh, okay. The, the, the argument, too, that she was younger in those games. I despise this argument, because this was what ruined James Bond. The current James Bond is a pussified, weaker, diminutive version of James Bond. But his first movie is Casino Royale, where the tagline was like, Oh, this is Bond before he became cool. I don't want to see James Bond before he became cool. James Bond is not supposed to be before he was cool. He's supposed to be James Fire fucking the Bond. Fire is the answer. <laughs> okay. I mean, if you don't, if you don't want to see, you know, a younger Lara Croft, that's fine, I guess. But I mean, I still think the games are okay. Well, Dev, you can be wrong on this as well. And this is why it's all malice. It's all malice. Hold on, is it malice that I also like the other Tomb Raider too? Yep. You become a useful idiot, Dev. Stop it. <laughs> oh, actually, see, here's an interesting thing as well. Okay, the the the, uh, the argument of the useful idiot, because this is one of like the biggest problems within all of this. The fact that so many people don't understand what is going on is another interesting one um have you seen reacher i'd be surprised if you had honestly no i didn't sorry so reacher is a show that's actually doing pretty well because it is the definition of house mom porn the main character is an enormous muscle bound wall of a man who gets his shirt torn off pretty much constantly he recently came out and said Fire that uh, Christians today have become the most vitriolic tribe. And that Trump is a rapist and a con man and the usual. Mm -hmm. And this is a man who at least claims to be, and I have no reason to disbelieve him on this, to be a, a Christian, like a full-on Christian. He doesn't go to church or anything, but he, he believes in his own way, right? This right here is the perfect example of a man who has been told the big lie, in essence. That he is existing in a world where certain things are the absolute unquestionable truths. And if anything goes against it, it must be bad. And this used to be the purview of actual 
conservative Christianity, but not today. This is how he can say that the Christians are the ones being aggressive here. Oh, it's the Christians being the most vitriolic tribe, even as the Christian values are constantly being attacked in his own country. It's why he can believe that Trump is a rapist and a con man, the most, uh, the least charitable interpretation of the Trump philophagus. Because he exists in this reality. This is where most people exist, frankly. So, there's a... How, 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 how politically boring do you Here's want this conversation question. to get? Fire is the answer. Because this is something that I'm currently figuring out, but it's all political theory nonsense. Do you want to hear it? It is all political theory. Well, come on, I, I can see... I think all of this comes from the exact same source that has simply gone through through the system to the point where now it is the world as we see it. Hey, give me a second here. I want to I want to find something real quick. Devil's so you know the uh, you know um you know the you know the the political history and significance of Menefrego. Yes, uh, we don't care. Heresy is the question. Yes, Fire but it's it's answer. Italian for I don't care. Yes, and it's it's it started off as like um, a rallying cry for when they were in, when the fascists were just street thugs, where basically they they said like like we Heresy don't care that we question. might get hurt or that Fire we might die. We're going to go out and commit this political violence, right? Um, that's what it started out as. But the saying rapidly evolved to basically basically be a rejection of the idea that um that socialists can morally browbeat them if that makes sense yes right uh, and so, an even wider sense too it eventually became a rejection of socialists as people not not just the meme it that was actually so what it was it was used to justify murder yes yes i don't care yeah so what's whenever whenever sargon talks about um liberalism collapsing into communism because of of the shared morality and there is some truth there I, I don't think it's nearly as simplistic as as he lays out sometimes but there's definitely a path there that's obvious right because they're both operating under the same moral principles and they're both um and and basically the liberal does not view the socialist as a friend but the socialist views the liberal as a useful idiot Right. It's like, well, we, mm -hmm. the socialist says, well, we both want the same things and we want freedom and equality. We just offer more than than you. So you are you are fresh converts for our movement. Meanwhile, the liberal looks at them and say and thinks that they're crazy. Um, but the socialist views them as as, as this, this fertile ground for colonization. Um, the fascist response, looking at both of these groups, is to say, I don't care. And that's basically when when, when the socialist comes up and says, hey, don't we believe in the same morality? The, the socialist thinks the liberal is going to say, well, yeah, but, and then they engage in a debate. The fascist simply says, no, we do not think the same morality. And then they, they end the conversation there by not even allowing the discussion to happen in the first place, which is what I don't care, which is what Minifrego actually means. Um, and so that, that's the historical context. What's interesting about this is, I'm going to now pull something up here. Um, hold on. How did, how did it go? Yeah, okay, the meme from Joker. Um, I'm tired of pretending it's not, right? When it's it's the scene where where in Joker where the uh, the host of the TV show asks him, "Don't you I forget I forget, I forget the exact line, but he says, "What do you think that this terrible thing is funny?" And he says, "I do." And I'm, and I'm and I'm tired of pretending that I don't. Mm -hmm. And that is this kind of flippant this kind of flippant saying, "You know what?" you can't actually push me into your position using moral browbeating because I'm, you know, if, if, if I'm, if I exist in so this liminal space between your morality and what I actually want, and you're going to browbeat me with your morality to move into your position, I will simply reject your morality and say, no, I actually think this is good. Fuck you. Right. And so that was one of the things that attracted many people to the Joker movie is, is just this willingness to finally just get fed up and say, no, I don't care about your moral arguments. I don't care about your moral judgments. I don't share your morals. I just disagree with you. 
and that's that. And I'm not, we're not going to have this, this, this back and forth where you appeal, where, where we appeal to some sort of shared morality. And then you can use that to pull me over. I'm just going to say no. Right. And yeah, Rose's example there, blackface is funny and I'm tired of pretending it's not exactly right. Because if you all shared the same, you know, lefty morals, you would have to basically, uh, you'd have to, you, you would have to self oppress your own your own urge to laugh at blackface because the morality says you shouldn't like it. Or you can say, actually, I do like it and fuck your morality. Right. Um, and also this, this is kind of why I think like the giga Chad meme, everyone loves the giga Chad meme, right? Because with the giga Chad meme, a person's just saying, oh yeah, this thing that you think is bad. I actually like it. It's actually good. Look, look at me. Just enjoy it. All right. I think this is one of the reasons at least if we're talking about political theory here, this is one of the reasons why the leftists the view question. everyone the who's answer. not them <laughs> and isn't in the process of moving towards them as fascist because they view this tendency of simply simply rejecting the shared morality. They view that as fascist, Service right? So here, Helldivers is another great example. Look at Helldivers, right? Everyone's saying, the, you know, the media literacy crowd is out on Twitter right now talking about Helldivers, guys. And they're saying, if you actually think that Helldivers isn't satirizing you, then you don't understand video games and you're you're a conservative, alt-right, Gamergate, man-baby chud. But the people who play Helldivers and enjoy it, they simply say, I don't care, this is my morality. Even if the creators of it are satirizing us, even in satire, we prefer what's presented over what you are offering us, right? Does this all make sense? Yes. Okay. So I don't exactly know where I was going with this, but oh no, right, right. Your your link regarding regarding this person, right? So um, I don't know actually what Reacher is, and I don't know who who this individual is. But when when you describe this to me, uh, you know, back before I was I went on this long diatribe, the, the Deva tribe here. All right. When you describe this to me, this sounded like a person who has gone through the process of not necessarily agreeing with the morality of the people that were browbeating him, but he has since been successfully browbeat over years and years and years, such that he has now moved into that position. And it almost seems unnatural for him to be in that position, comparing him now to what he was back then. And it's because that shift has taken place. However, if the shift didn't take place, if you simply said, no, actually, that was good, and I kind of like it the way that was before, and you can't move me off this position, he would have been labeled as a fascist. And that's why. Because, because I think, this is still something I'm still kind of working out in my head, but I think that leftists view people who disagree with the, the gradual moral slippery slope that moves them into their position, if they can't go down that slope they are fascist because the logic they use to not go down the slope is to say, I don't care. Service guarantees yep. citizenship. Uh, and that is the eventual inevitable point of it. Because here you have a person, because the point, point with Reacher that I find so interesting is you have here a person who says he is a Christian and has again, again and again espoused the views of Christianity in terms of values, etc. And yet utterly rejects Christianity in the current like political idea how to put it like that um, where he thinks that Christians are the most vitriolic tribe which is nonsense e even at the height of the most conservative elements of Christianity they were nowhere near as bad as the left is today in large part because they weren't capable of it but I also believe at least in part because they weren't willing to do so either and so for mm. this person to arrive at this point something quite serious will have to have happened for a relatively long period of time as you say and this isn't even just the moral browbeating of immediacy this is the moral browbeating of a very long time where the extremist position of the left has become the norm and has been the norm now for an extended period of time to the point where that is the moral normality now it has changed to a degree simply because like as, as you said things like cancel culture isn't as effective anymore well th that's why i think they're they're now all panicking right like fascism is on the rise well why is fascism on why is fascism on the rise because we can't we, we have less tools to browbeat people into our positions with
Uh-huh. That's why fascism is on the rise. And it's like, okay, 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 dude, sure. Um, there's some in the chat. Yeah, this guy in the chat, Changeling. You push people into complete apathy and then camp them for not caring. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it, right? Because the idea is that if you were a moral person, you would care. So if, if since you are a good person and you do care, we'll use your caring to push you into our camp. And if you resist that movement, then you must have a different moral standard, which means that you don't care about our moral standard. And if you don't care, that means you're a fascist because the fascists didn't care. That's the logic they use. Yeah. There we go. I finally worked it out. Yep. Yeah. In large part. And this is also the, um, the problem of Menefrego as well which can become an issue and probably will become an issue is that if you mm-hmm. do push one side for too long eventually menefrego will become reality because the the left's claim to absolute moral authority and the fact that they cuz again everything is political right is that is the, the the foot in the door the moment you agree to that premises you must agree to every other premises because everything is left wing political H- have you noticed how like in t- 2014 everything you liked was racist right uh, yeah, 40k yeah. was racist but today that's no longer the case now 40k isn't racist now 40k was always woke Captain America Saturday, was always yeah, woke. Yeah. Marvel was always woke, right? Mm-hmm. Well, m- remember when I mentioned my uh, my conservative analysis of Legend of Zelda, right? And the the lefties that were responding to me, they were split into two very different camps. One saying that Zelda was bad, and the other saying that no, Zelda is leftist, and you just don't understand it, right? Mm-hmm. And it's 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 the same reason is because. Everything is political. What they mean by that, I mean, for, first of all, it's actually a true statement, which is kind of the unfortunate thing we all had to come to grips with. We were all saying it wasn't true back in 2014. We were wrong about that. Everything actually is political. But the issue is that when they said everything is political, what they meant was everything is leftist. Yes. And then what they meant by yes. everything, what they meant by everything is leftist is they meant anything that is not leftist is bad and has to be either destroyed or converted, right? So you can say, yes, of course, everything is, everything's political. I've made this piece of artwork that is political, but it's right-leaning, all right? They're not going to tolerate that. They're, they're not going to accept the everything is political logic in that sense because they don't actually mean everything is political. They mean that everything should be oriented towards them. That's yes. what they mean. This is why it's the narrow wedge because, again, leftism cannot exist in a neutral climate. That is why everything is political and everything is always left wing political and they will begin when they think they are in power to change something. They will use the heaviest terminology they can to get into the companies. That is, it's racist. Whereas once they are in getting into the companies, they already have the power inside. Now what they need to do is to retain that power, and they can retain that power by attacking their opposition. And so when a gamer goes, no, everything isn't political, this isn't, uh, Marvel isn't sexist, whatever, this isn't actually judgmental in any way, it's always been this way, this is fine, then that becomes the reverse, where now it was always woke, what are you complaining about? What are you... X-Men has always been woke. There's always been left-wing. Well, to be fair, X-Men probably has always been left-wing, to be honest, considering the type of the story, with, like the, the kind of minority thing. Like, I, I, I get it with that with that example. But I do know what you mean in gen- generally, right? Okay, hold on. The chat oh, is now screaming. Well, hold on, hold on. Because the chat is now, everyone in the chat is now screaming, no, everything isn't political. Listen, listen, listen. Guys, okay. You have to understand, you're wrong about that. And when I said that not everything is political, you know, years and years ago. I was wrong about that back then. And most importantly of all is that if you go up against someone in, on a philosophical level, if you go up against someone who believes everything is political and your only defense is, no, everything's not political, you will simply lose to them because that's not a defense against what they're trying to do. Like that, that's, the, that, that's the same point that Sargon was making is that when when you simply say not everything is political, what they view is they view a wide open door to march in and take over because that offers no defense. It offers no defense against the people who actually want to turn everything towards their politics. All right? 
Like the I, I, Ch Chad is screaming. Uh, you're all wrong. I'm sorry, guys, but you're just wrong about this. Listen, everything is political. That formulation works because even if a piece of artwork does not have a political agenda behind its creation, insofar as it represents something that is normal, and almost our, all artwork represents something that's normal, it is reinforcing the normative politics. All right. So if you make like a, just a very simplistic love story where you have like a boy and a girl fall in love, that in some way is reinforcing the very normal in, in the real world. It's reinforcing the very normal thing of a boy and girl falling in love and you know getting married and having kids. And that has political content to it. OK, that's that. And it's important to understand this, because if you say that's not political, if you if you're out here saying that's not political, you know what happens? That means the left wingers march in and say, well, since it's not political, we can turn that that boy and girl falling in love into a boy and boy falling in love. It's not political, right? It doesn't matter, right? So here's the thing. You have to understand that that things that represent the normal, even if they're not outwardly political, still contain political content. And it's important to defend that that normalcy. All right. I don't think that the chat's ever going to understand this. I think they're all just like screeching and being retarded, but I'm correct on this. I'm 100% correct on this. Well, what you're saying is Gramsci. That's what you're saying. Yes. Yes. Because what, uh, what Dev is saying, in his usual communist fashion, is that mm -hmm. you have the idea of the established culture. The established culture is what we view as not political, just as normal. However, the opposition will not view it as such. They will try to create a counterculture to this. This was Gramsci's idea. That the reason why the proletariat revolution did not occur was because people were fully stuck inside the normative ideas of capitalism. And therefore, no yes. communist revolution could possibly happen because people were so happy and so content in the capitalist system. So that's why yes, Gramsci said yes. that we need to create a new entire system. And so when they say everything is political, they mean that everything that is normal is political, but from a non-leftist standpoint. It is normal as in it is ours. It is not normal because it is not theirs. Yes. Basically, like anything, anything that represents or props up the normal contains political content that is not leftist. Which is true, by the way. Gramsci was right about this, but like he, he, his goal was to make things leftist. Our goal should be, should be to recognize what they're doing and resist it. And you can't resist it by saying that oh, it's not Harris political, the question. because there's there's no defense the in that position. <laughs> yes, the argument should be it's normal rather than it's political, and then you simply need to make the positive argument for why it's normal and why something being normal is good. Xanthonium in the chat's like, this is why Dev is not a gatekeeper. I'm literally making the best possible gatekeep argument. All right? That's like, here, here's how you gatekeep. All right? The leftists march up and say, everything is political. Therefore, you must change what you have in your community to be oriented towards leftist politics. And then you, as the gatekeeper, you say, yes, everything is political, but that's why I must keep it to not be oriented towards leftist politics. That's how you gatekeep. Yep. Well, it is also to simply just not allow that at all. It's like they say everything is political. You simply say, OK, no, we don't we don't accept this here. Everything is normal, normal our normal mm -hmm. that is my politics yeah well th this is like two different ways of formulating the same idea because yes. if if the normal props up what is currently like the, the the conservative politics then being normal is political but it's oriented towards conservatism and not leftism right yes so yeah it's the same thing yeah so yes everything is political chat just that Sorry, by, it's just by that there it is using the leftist idea of it by the left yeah hold on. dead end dead end satellite he, he's a viewer of mine so th thanks for coming through he he has it Harris oriented correctly question. yes Fire it's political answer. and it's mine and i like it that way yes so yes it is political like yes legend of zelda is political and i like it that way 
know what I mean? It it's it's a it is a guy rescuing a princess. You're slaying a dragon. You're yeah, you're restoring the it. you're restoring Fire order to the, the kingdom. <laughs> you're you you know you are uh, you you are bringing back the monarchy. You're doing all of these right wing political actions, and they are normal and they're good, and we should support them. Yes, it is like saying 40k yeah, is right wing because 40k Fire is, is right wing, <laughs> and then simply staring at them when I say, but it's not right wing. No, I actually, this actually happened during my debate with Radholm, where it's like, no, 40k is inherently right wing. It's like I don't believe so. Like, okay, tell me what's left wing about 40k? Silence. Because there is <laughs> nothing left wing about 40k. That's the thing. And I mean, they, they they could make the argument like it's a satire because they're presenting right wing ideas in a negative light. Like that's how the that, that's the argument that I would make. But it wouldn't be a very good well, it's, one. It's not a good satire. That's the thing. It's a terrible satire. Because mm -hmm. satire is one of those words that have practically lost all meaning now, where everything is satirical. If everything is satirical, nothing is satirical. Yeah, yeah. And and when it comes to the whole Helldivers thing, like Helldivers is satirizing you, right? If you actually believe in the politics that, that Helldivers puts forward, I don't think most of us do, but if you did, you would say, despite that, it's good and I like it this way and this is how I want it to be, right? So you, you if you're going to defend the political content of of the art that you enjoy, you must accept that the political content exists first. Because if you don't, then you're blind to what they're doing. And that's why that's why the left has won for the past 10 years, guys, because they were not blind to what they were doing. And we were. It is also so it was, the, the fact that yeah. things things being satire does not provide a argument for the left. That's another thing that we do need to uh, come around to and understand as well. It's like, OK, hell life is a satire. Sure. And? What is your argument? It's, 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 it's bad, though, what it says. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And? No, nobody, nobody embraces Helldiver's political ideology. Well, that I've seen, anyways. They, they call it based because they know it pisses people off. They like to use it as a tool to do that. That's what it's become. It's not that it's a particularly positive-looking ideology. It's obviously authoritarian as all hell. And it could even potentially be fascist, depending on how the AI votes, basically. <laughs> mm -hmm. Heresy but again, question. that's irrelevant. Menefrego. <laughs> so it's one of those things where, like, everything is political, but there's a lot of virtue in simply enjoying a piece of artwork, whether or not it aligns with you politically. Because being able to turn yourself off and just like, I'm just going to watch this movie and have fun. It's a fun movie. Fuck it. I don't got to think too hard about it. That's something that the left can't do. Because when they say everything is political, what they have packaged in there is, and therefore, you must be constantly on all the time. You must be constantly connected. You must be constantly thinking of the struggle. And that's how the left views it, right? But you can, en you can enjoy a, um, a piece of political art in a non-political way. And in fact, you should be able to do that. It's probably part of a being like, like a well-rounded adult. Fire is the answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now that Dev has managed to speak his communist ways, I will also say, no, X-Men is not progressive. <laughs> okay. You know why, Dev? Tell me about it. Because X-Men have nothing to do with being the minority. The entire point of X-Men is to be accepted into the majority being humans. It's colorblindness. It has nothing to do with minority rights. It has nothing uh, to not do anymore. with minority empowerment. It is simply the mutants saying, hey, we're people. Did you see in the new, um, in one of the new X-Men comics, Storm basically starts up a pro-mutant cult and that takes no up the Magneto position? The new comics. And she takes up the Magneto position of basically being like explicitly pro-mutant and like we are oppressed and we must fight back against the humans. I restate, there is no such thing as recent comics. I'll actually say, the uh, the recent X Men ninety seven uh, animated series, not bad. It's not very political. In fact, I don't think it's particularly political at all. 
Uh, it could have been made better. Like, I don't see why they would want to recreate the animation-style jank of the Paris era the as well. The answer. <laughs> but it's 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 a reasonable piece of entertainment that I don't actually uh, despise, which is unusual. Here, let me show you this. I found I found the comic. Here, j just uh, re read off these four panels, Arch, if you don't mind. So this is this is Storm's cult, and she sounds exactly like Magneto. Which completely destroys the point of the X Men, because it was it was supposed to be like the liberals versus the progressives with the two factions, but that's gone now. Uh, oh, Krakoa! I do hate Krakoa. <sighs> a great thing happened today. A miracle made possible by mutant hand. Can I love them? For they have righted the wrongs of man, defeated our great enemy death. We see them, but do we know them? This is my sister. I know her. As do you. Yes, her name is Monette, but she is more than what that. What is she? Mutant. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she sounds like Magneto, which like makes no sense for her character or for the X-Men. But basically, the progressives have come around to Magneto's position. Well, Magneto's position was he. Magneto was actually a pretty good villain. Because the entire point of Magneto is basically his journey from towards understanding that he had become what he hated. That was the entire point. Like, okay, the Nazis did mean things to me, and now I'm going to do mean things to humans, and then eventually, slowly but surely, he goes like, oh, yeah, I, I see how this is... <laughs> I see how this doesn't really work out in the long run. Like, it's simplistic, but it's effective. Whereas Magneto today is, is probably a hero. I, I guarantee you. He's, <laughs> he's probably one of the good guys by now. And he's probably not even a good guy because he's realized the error of his ways. He's probably a good guy because he was proven right by something, somewhere, somehow, I'm sure. Didn't they? Yeah, probably. Didn't they get their ethno state? I, I think the mutants got their eth ethno state. That's that um, the island thingy, Krakoa or whatever. They have a mutant ethno state? <laughs> I, I believe okay. they do, yes. Where only mutants get to live. I'm, I'm fairly sure they do yeah. have the little mutant ethno state. I know I've mentioned it a few times now, but there was in the, in the '90s cartoon there was that uh, that one scene where Beast is on trial and he's in jail awaiting awaiting uh, to go on trial, and Magneto breaks him out, and then they have a debate over like you know should Beast says listen I have to I have to stand trial to show the humans that we're actually like them, and I, I have to be I have to be subject to the same laws as them because we are actually all the same inside, and Magneto says no I you know you, you are actually a mutant you're different than them and and we, we need to look out for each other brother and they have they have the the actual debate between two di actual different positions, and n neither of them is straw manned, and it's actually like good writing. <laughs> you're not gonna get that nowadays. You are not going to get that nowadays, no. In fact, they would just call Beast and Uncle Tom, and that would be it. Beast and Uncle Tom. Just one more thing to be ruined. That's all. Mm -hmm. One more thing to be ruined. Yep. And also, I guess we have completely, uh, we've completely reversed everything now. Uh, but the localization thing. Right. I don't even know where the hell... Yeah, that was supposed to be one of the earlier topics. We, uh... Oops. We went about that the other way around. There you go. So did you see the localization thing that was going on with Capcom? I saw the Nintendo one, but not the Capcom one. Let's see. To be fair, there's been, like, a, a long-standing problem in localization... Oh yes, yes. It's been a. It's been, it's been for quite some time. It's been similar to the Sweet Baby Ink thing, where basically you have writers who are coming in and changing what has been done before, but this time it's it's more explicitly changing rather than assisting, because they're taking completed works in Japanese and then retranslating them and changing things in the retranslation. Yes, and and uh, essentially the, hoping that the Japanese don't notice. Yeah, because the um. The argument they always give is you cannot translate one to one because Japanese is a very different language than English. And it's like, okay, yeah, fair enough. But that doesn't mean that you have to like insert Gamergate references or talk about the patriarchy in your translation. You know what I mean? Yeah, the thing is, there are parts of Japanese humor that would be basically impossible to translate into English because a lot of it's based on puns, for example, mm -hmm. which only work puns in are Japanese. Great, by the way. 
Puns are great. They're the best kind of humor. And when you do do this, the simple solution is to simply put a little annotation going at the bottom saying, this is retarded Asian humor. Don't care. Don't, don't worry. It, it's supposed to be funny. You, you need yep. to explain the joke, basically, because the joke cannot be funny. You cannot repl replicate Japanese puns in English because Japanese puns are retarded. Most of it's based around the fact that their language is retarded. And they have literally words that mean the different things depending upon context or like... I remember there, there was a... Um, there, I, there was a YouTube video, like a learn Japanese YouTube video for like a Japanese expert uh, who was teaching Japanese. And he explained that some words were literally the same exact word with different meanings. So he pronounced them, and he pronounced them in the exact same way. It's literally the same word, from pronunciation to writing to everything. And the only difference is dependent upon context. I, I cannot remember any instances like that in English, like where a word means, literally the same word means two completely different things depending upon external context. There's definitely a few English words like that, but they're not that common. I gotta Which think ones? about it. I have to think about it for a minute. Oh, do you? Okay. Which words are they, Dev? Huh? Which words are they? Huh? Huh? Dev? Dev? Which words? For some reason, Dev? I think huh? one of them starts with C, but I can't remember what, I'm what it is. Hmm? What are they, Dev? What are they, Dev? Give me a minute. I'm going to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. There's, there's an obvious one in the chat. Yeah, cool. Cool can mean, like, cold, or it can mean attractive or interesting. Uh, I suppose, but, yeah. And it's the same spelling, and it's the same pronunciation. But I don't accept cool on the context, as an English word, though. Depending on the context of what it's used, yeah. Yep, no, cool I don't sense. accept it. It's an Americanized version of cool. Is cool, Because it? it start out with, like, cool as ice, where it was intending it to be cool. You know, I don't accept this example. You don't it's accept It's an that. Americanized slang term. I reject it. <laughs> okay. Uh, how about a bank? I mean, what's the difference used in the bank? So... Um, a bank could mean going to the bank where money is, right? Or a bank could mean the bank of a river. Mm. Or a bank could mean, like, bouncing an object off of a wall, like a bank shot. Possibly, but I think we're less talking about context now and very, very different, like, sceneries. But yeah, yeah, I, I sort of get it. Oh, yeah, the whole buffalo, 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 buffalo thing, yeah. But here's the thing is that, in this case, bank is spelled the same and pronounced the same. And it's used in these different contexts. Heresy's the question. Fire I suppose the there are two examples of this. I still reject it. So there, there are probably, like, a bunch of puns, a bunch of puns that use these. Yeah. I now, know. I, 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 I know, know, like, I know someone, someone in the chat says canon, but that doesn't yet. count because canon as in the canon of a work and canon as in the weapon that you fire a cannonball out of, they're spelled differently. They are. I've, I've fallen so for this multiple work. times because it's dumb. Yeah. Yeah, a bat. Yeah, vampire bat versus baseball bat. Yeah. <sighs> Maybe. This is more like species. Hmm. Possibly. Still... The point remains, Japanese is a retarded language. Translating into English is dumb and silly and shouldn't be done. <laughs> they just only, they should only have, like, subs? And you know that's what? It? <laughs> yes. You know what? Unironically, yes. If you don't watch anime with subs, then fuck you. What's wrong with you? Learn Japanese if you have to. <laughs> so, this is, like, a much wider conversation than just Capcom, right? Because there's anime that's been ruined, there's video games that's been ruined. Um, they've, like... You know what? You know what? Okay. So, did you play Persona, Arch? No. Uh, I, I own a couple of them because they look cool, but I've never gotten around to playing. Okay. So, 
I remember I remember at one point I was on Wick's channel and Brianna Wu asked me to uh, prove to her that this whole this was actually happening. And I did. And she conceded the point. So I, I pulled out like a bunch of examples of basically just where translation is ruining characters and ruining stories. Um, and one one big one was um, the tomboy in Persona 4 who was retranslated to be a trans man. I forget the name of the character, but she's very clearly a woman who dresses like a man. And the cross dresses, and but it's still very clearly a woman, and and talks like one and acts like one, but they made that person trans in the in the um in the retranslation, Heresy's and that was a big fucking Fire thing back in that game. Well, because here's the thing: it was like it was like the, the game was I think I think like remastered for for like modern consoles, and they changed the translation during the remastering project. So like everyone was like saying, "You're ruining the tomboys again." Um, that was one example. The other one was uh, the fucking the, the what was it? What was the name of it? Hold on. I think, yeah, I turned my childhood friend into a girl. Right. So this is like a gay question. romance Fire is the answer. <laughs> manga. Here, I'll, I'll just give you the uh, the cover art. A gay so basically, romance uh, manga. yeah, it, it's a gay romance manga where there's two guys that are that are high school friends. And it turns out that the, 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 the femboy guy uh, likes wearing makeup and likes cross-dressing, right? And... Then Heresy the secret is outed to Fire to the friend, <laughs> but who's like, oh, you're actually like really cute as a girl, and they end up dating, right? And it's it, it is specifically a gay romance manga. It's about two male characters, two men. One of them's a fen boy, but they're two men, okay? And this was when this was translated and brought over, the official translation made the fen boy into a trans woman. Okay. So this is another example of how translation is basically you have ideologues who are in these positions translating these works coming over from Japan and changing the characters to fit progressive politics when they don't actually really fit that much and fans of these things are are um are getting angry about it as they should get angry about it right as they should yes so yeah. i think capcom is ca a specific example yeah so, so Capcom, I think, is just like one, um, one instance in a very long line of instances where this is happening, where basically they're saying, "Oh, well, actually, I'm sure you recall back in the '90s and 2000s, they did this back then, but but instead they were translating to make things more like Americanized, right? They weren't making them more like, like more LGBT friendly. They were just changing rice balls into hamburgers and stuff like that, right? Or in, in Pokemon, it was jelly donuts. You know, it's the same type of thing where they're not authentically translating the the intended meaning of the artwork by the original author whether it's a, a manga or a game or a show or whatever it is and in fact they're saying well we have to make it so that americans will like it and it's like well what do you do oh we're, we're gonna add a bunch of trans people to it or we're gonna add a bunch of, like it, it it's they're, they're they're going far beyond the mandate of of what they should be doing basically mm -hmm. And that is exactly pretty much what the Capcom thing uh, was, where they started explaining why they needed cultural sensitivity or inclusive language and representation. Uh, and specifically, they also mentioned that they needed to make the item they were translating so that it was culturally appropriate for where it was being sold. Which is, of course, in my opinion, the exact opposite of what they need to do. Because when I'm playing a Japanese game, I am not playing it despite the fact that it is a Japanese game. I am probably playing it because it is a Japanese game. Yeah. Like, if you want a window into another culture, which, by the way, is significantly more inclusive than anything that the left actually does, you don't want the the content coming over from that culture to be whitewashed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Service guarantee. What, wasn't Grums working on a big reveal on Capcom? Actually, hold on. Ah, uh, possibly. Yeah, he posted that he's dropping a big something Heresy's or other on Capcom is today. <laughs> is it? Is it here? Let me see. I will need to find it. Heresy yeah, he posted this. Fire he's the covering answer. the same thing that you're covering, Arch. I'll post it I in am the chat. Localizers. 
Yeah, yep, he says breaking. Capcom one, yeah. goes. Yeah, Capcom goes full woke in the localization, changes characters, gameplay, and more for DEI. Okay, how do I know? My insider scoop posts tomorrow. But what's his insider scoop? That was posted yesterday. Surely his insider scoop is out. Surely. Maybe it's not out yet. Huh. What was it? <laughs> Did you find it? Oh. Someone in the chat says that that his contact is currently compiling information. Says Karma's camera in the chat. Okay. Yeah, I think he has a um I think he has a contact in the industry that's giving him info. So maybe it's still maybe it's still coming together. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Okay. Well that's interesting. Um I'm pretty sure I know exactly what's going to come out of it, though. It's a studio yeah. probably full of yeah. Westerners, basically, or Western adjacent people that have decided that Western values need to be put into these things, regardless of any actual intent based on the company. Because I do not believe this is Capcom's intention to do this. I'd be very surprised if that turned out to be the case, that this was somehow an instruction from Capcom. Well, it's Capcom America's intention. You saw the whole yep. drag queen thing from last year, two years ago, right? Yep, that's true. <laughs> yeah, so it was a new Capcom. I think I think it was a Monster Hunter or something. And in in the Japanese Twitch channel, they had some VTubers playing it on the official Capcom Japanese channel. Yep, and they were playing the new game and talking about it. And they had drag queens in the European on the, on the one. English. <laughs> it's like yep. what the fuck, dude? <laughs> I remember that one. Yeah, uh, it could it could simply be that, and that's kind of the same thing with Nintendo that's been going around a little bit too, with Nintendo's DEI initiative stuff, which seems to be near exclusively the DEI initiative of Nintendo of America rather than anything from Nintendo Japan. Yeah, and also from what I understand, is those guys. I think you did a video on this, Arch, being being a um. A, a giga Nintendo cuck myself. Uh, I know a bit more about it. I think basically the the DEI stuff and this this specific localization team in Nintendo, they primarily handle Fire Emblem because Fire Emblem is their big RPG series. You know, with tons of characters and like character interactions and tons of dialogue. When it comes to something that is um, more straightforward, it's they're not really that involved. But when you when they are involved, it's fucking awful. Okay. So, here, let me, let me see if I, can, if I can give you... Here we go. Like, here's some examples if you want to see them. This is from uh, Fire Emblem Echoes, right? And the, the literal translation is, Now that's just rude. I can use lightning magic, you know? You use what? Nothing but fire magic? And then the DEI translation is, uh, Rude and wrong. I can conjure lightning, Bowie. Big, hurty lightning. What have you got? Fire? Maybe I'll call you if I want to roast marshmallows. So they didn't like shoehorn in anything progressive, but they certainly did not directly translate it. They just provided a really bad translation. Yes. Yes. And if you look at a lot of Nintendo's um a lot of Nintendo's Fire Emblem translations, they're all like pretty much universally awful. So this is another one here, right? And you have, uh, let's see. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to just read the third image because it's probably the most ridiculous one. So, before, the, the, uh, the line read, If that crass phrase means you wish to speak with me, then please proceed. And then after the localizers got through with it, the, it says, oh, what is it? <laughs> like all of the context, all of the meaning, all of the particularity of the way the person speaks completely stripped out of that interaction between these two characters. Because I guess they just can't fucking write. Like, I don't know. I don't know, man. Oh, that's this thing. It's like, okay. I, I don't even actually really know in that case. I suppose they figured that I, I don't know. I, I, no, no, I've got nothing. It, it just, just looks retarded to mm. me. 
So there, here, here's here's one point in the incompetence camp. Okay, I, I I still agree with you. There's a lot of malice here, and there has definitely been some malice in Fire Emblem as well, because there have been some changes in Fire Emblem that seem ex like actually malicious. Um, but this also seems like just an inability to fucking write. Wow, the malice is the ones hiring the people in ability to write. <laughs> That's how that works, Dev. That's how that works, and you should know this. Well, sure. I mean, th that was the whole point of my competency crisis video, right? Is like when you have someone at the top who wants to coalition build, and they want loyal people, they'll hire people who are incompetent, because the incompetent person who gets a job despite being incompetent will be loyal to the system that put them in place. Mm -hmm. So they're being hired for loyalty, not for competence. But that means that at least some of the people in these structures have to be incompetent and not malicious. Incompetence and malice. Maybe it's the same thing, Dev. Maybe it's the same thing. Maybe it's the same thing. I think it might be the same thing, Dev. I think incompetence and malice might actually be more or less the same fucking thing. <laughs> yes, yes, I believe that. Yes, I believe so. Incompetence and malice is basically the same thing. Because they both lead to terrible things happening. In my hobbies. And I hate it. All of it. Simple. <laughs> There's one last thing I want to look up. And what's that, Dev? Okay. Who? Okay. Okay. All right. No, I thought this was a translator for, for Nintendo, but it's actually for Sega. But do you want to see, anyway? Do you want to see yeah. the nonsense? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's not about Capcom, and I'm sorry that we didn't talk about Capcom much. We, we can if you want, but this is like a wider conversation about just translation, right? Yes. Um, so here, I'll, I'll post you this person's Twitter account. This is a localization producer, and they've worked for Sega and Funimation. Japan 2 English specialist, all right? That um, looks like an account, yeah, definitely. <laughs> What do you think of this account? How does it look? Aegis uh, I Aegis C W A Ally. Translate, Dev. <laughs> what does that mean? Fire is the answer. Um, <laughs> what does it mean, Dev? What does it mean? I, I don't know. I don't know this time. <laughs> Dev, what does it mean, Dev? Dev. Wait, read it again. A E G S Aegis C W A Ally. I don't fucking have any idea. Oh no, that's a union. I think it's a oh. union. So it doesn't have anything to do with genitalia this time around. Oh, that's right, because um That's right. A bunch of Sega employees unionized. And that's their union. Okay. Well, that makes a certain degree of sense. Yep. All right. Not not as bad as it could be. Not as bad so, as it could be. Now that we've seen this person, this is a take they gave maybe a month ago. Yeah, a month ago, that made them go extremely viral. I'll I'll post to you the uh, the two images. Do you want to uh, have the honor of reading these off? Let's see. You are going to love everything you work on, but it's your job to do justice to the work and its audience and remain professional about it all. And for fuck's sake, don't shit where you eat, you've hurt a lot of careers today. Every time you give the culture war weirdos fuel, you make things worse for the people they harass. Not only are you out of a job, but you've given them a brand new reason to send us death threats. But then someone has to fire back at them. Someone has to get the last word. Someone has to prove to them they are wrong. And they all get new fodder to harass us all again. I grew up in 4chan. I watched the milk lol cows. I know how this shit works. And now this, really? You know they're still using that single scene from the Dragon Maid dub nearly a decade later as a reason why we should all be lynched, right? What do you think they're going to do with this idiot? 
Anyway, I'm sure they'll be here shortly to tell me why I deserve to get hate or slurs or death threats because it checks Fox News article. I translated Garu as bimbo. So oh, Jesus. Remember, look, comrades, they don't give a shit about translation. They just want to be mad at the libs. Yes, Garu does not mean bimbo, just to point that out, too. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. That's, uh, that's not how that word works. So what basically happened here is that there's a YouTuber. Is this a YouTuber or a Twitch streamer? Let me look it up real quick. YouTuber named Jello Apocalypse. Okay. Two million subs. Um, he's, he's a writer and a voice actor. And also, I think he works in translation, I think. But he also is a YouTuber with two million subs. And he... Um, he basically revealed a lot of the I translation the practices, <laughs> a lot of the localization practices of one of the shows he worked on. And it didn't look good what he managed to uh, to pull out. Now, I don't think he did it purposely because I think, I think he's very he's very woke, so I don't think he did it purposefully. But he revealed a bunch of things that uh, the fans didn't like. All right? And so this is her saying basically, hey, don't reveal the fact that we're ruining everything. Don't don't pull the curtain back, you fucking moron. <laughs> this is this is basically what she's saying here. Okay, that's very smart, intelligent yeah. almost. There's there's actually a lot of deep lore on the on the localization, on the localization conversation. There's like show after show. There's manga after manga. Like, I think I think was, was this was this was I think this is what it was. Yeah. Lovely complex dub writer. We made it good. This show sucked. Ah, oh, yes, I remember yeah. seeing that one. Yes, yes, yeah. I remember but, that one. This, this is someone who completely despised the the author and the work that they were working on, that they were adapting. Which is and, brilliant. And then they 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 openly revealed that yes, that's right. We made this better by localizing it and ruining everything. And that got so so many fans so fucking angry that you had other localizers come out, like this person that I linked to you, say, hey, keep it down. <laughs> Don't just directly tell them that we're ruining all the stuff they love. I mean, valuable fucking advice, I guess. <laughs> They're bad people, Bev. They're just bad people. Malice, all of it. They're just bad people. Are them Listen, Malice. Listen, some of them definitely are, and I agree. I'm on board. All of them, Dev. All of them. All of it. Every one of them. Malice, Dev. Malice. Malice, Devicus. Malice. Oh, I forgot about this part of the story. This is the same person, the Katrina person. Look at this. She outright says the translation is not for you. Oh, yes. I remember this one, too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know what? Then we won't fucking watch it. We won't buy it. We won't buy your fucking games. We won't buy your fucking shows. We won't, we won't buy the manga. We won't buy any of it, all right? If, it, if it's for someone else, get them to give you money. Well, now, Dev, don't say that. I'm still going to watch it. <laughs> just, just going uh, to... Uh... <laughs> just from somewhere else. There are, there are just... many other people who, uh, who create watchable variants of this, Dev. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This, incidentally... So... Um, mm -hmm. is why stuff like fan translations are so popular and have always been very, very popular. Because if a fan is translating something, at least you've got a reasonably good chance that they are actually a fan of what they're translating. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a strange... There's a strange... Um, it's it's kind of a weird dynamic that's happening here, right? Because you definitely have some people who are just ideologues and they're brought in and they're not fans and they don't give a shit, right? And they'll just destroy the show or they'll destroy the game and they don't care. But you definitely have some people who come in and they are actually fans, right? These are people who like, man, I grew up like watching fan subs and I, I maybe I was even part of a fan subbing group back in the day. And they're actually into this stuff. But nonetheless, they still come in and they still inject politics into it, despite being a fan, because they think the politics actively improves it. It's a difference between the person who doesn't care and just wants to use it and the person who thinks that the politics actually makes it better. 
right? This this will be like the difference between Anita Sarkeesian and Zoe Quinn, because Anita, Anita Sarkeesian was not a gamer. Zoe Quinn was a gamer, but it didn't matter in the end because they were both still ideologues. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing. The ideology overrides. Like even if, even if they think they're a fan of the thing, and they're not really, because this thing. My definition of a fan so is somebody who would place what they are a fan of over the politics you know they it would have the sanctity of the thing in and of itself would be important Service guaranteed citizenship sure. but an yeah, ideologue never will never ever ever at any point place the creation over their ideology it is always the ideology first mm -hmm. yeah I, I guess what i mean is like there's that very famous clip of anita sarkeesian saying i'm not a gamer I, I didn't get into gaming. You know, I did this. I'm doing this for school. And then compare that with uh, Zoe Quinn, who actually talks about like playing Super Nintendo as a kid and like what games she had and how she played with her dad. And like there, there it's clear. It's clear that she actually does play and enjoy video games. It's just that she also ruins them and doesn't care that she ruins them. While Anita is just a complete outsider. Yep. I suppose that's it's a slight differential worth making. Listen, listen, Arch, truth is its own reward. Mm, I don't know, Dev. Your version of the truth, Dev, has often disturbed and frightened me. <laughs> I think the Deviant in, version of the truth should be rejected on occasion. In terms of Capcom, though, to go back, since we've now gone way, way off topic. In terms of Capcom, um, this is not necessarily their first rodeo with this sort of thing. And we mentioned, we mentioned the whole drag queens on the... Uh, on the stream before so they they have a history of at least at least their english divisions have a history of doing this sort of thing mm -hmm. um one second let me see i think this is just like okay do, do you recall much earlier where i said like it, it wasn't strictly get woke go broke it's the it's go broke get woke you know, they go broke first, and then the ideology is their life raft. The, the life raft they hope will will save them. Yes, which I only partially agree with, but I see the point. Right. So, the I'm just looking, I'm looking through my giant Capcom file, and the previous Capcom controversy before this one was the Dragon's Dogma um, DLC nonsense. Yep. Did you see this? I We're did. basically like. You know, Dragon's Dogma was Dragon's Dogma Two was this big game that came out, and everyone's like looking forward to it. And they're like, "How about we just charge you out the ass for fucking everything? Here, spend hundreds of extra dollars on this already full-priced game to buy a bunch of extra shit." And everyone was like losing it at this. Like, what? Like, what the fuck, Capcom? So it seems like there's in in the in the nineties and in the two thousands, you had like Capcom, you had Konami, you had Square Enix. And you had Sega, right? And there were these big companies that had so many good games, so many good IPs. People loved them. Like, they could do no wrong. You know, like, it was... But now, now, all of their IPs are dead except one giant tentpole IP for each of them. For Sega, it's not even Sonic anymore. It's Yakuza, all right? For, um, for um, Capcom, it's Resident Evil. For Konami, it's Metal Gear. I think it's Metal Gear. And then for Square Enix, it's Final Fantasy, right? And... Everything else has just gone by the wayside, right? N all the old games that everyone loves, they've all been forgotten about. They're not making new ones. When they do occasionally make new ones, they generally suck. And they're they're putting all of their money into these into one IP. And it comes out, and usually it's just answer. mid. <laughs> it's not bad, but it's usually not great. And it seems like these are just, these are, 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 almost dead institutions. They're not quite dead yet. They're not corpses that are being inhabited by by progressives and being feasted on by progressives. They're not there yet. They're almost dead, though. They're on life support, right? And they're like, we, we just got to make it to put out our next Final Fantasy, guys. It'll be fucking amazing. And it's like, only okay. You know, Final Fantasy 16 was only okay. And um, I, I think a lot of the stuff that we see coming out of these companies, both in terms of the extreme greed on the financial side and all the woke stuff on on the politics side, I think it's just them desperately trying to stay alive. 
Possibly. I mean, it is a way for them to get money. At, at least theoretically, it's a way for them to get money. Though it is also, I think, the idea of popularity. Um, the ESG funds are obviously a, a huge part of it, because if they can get the ESG cash, then they can perhaps keep themselves alive for longer. Um, and it can also, you know, continue to fund their companies, of course, which is very important. And it's also that they are getting people from inside of their companies who will tell them that this is popular as a way to, to, to you know, get Fire that money back. Answer. Because, of course, this doesn't come out of nowhere either. They don't randomly come up with the idea that they're going to try and make something woke, the executives, because they have got no idea what woke is, probably. This comes from within the company's lower branches. Uh, that's also where the, this localization stuff is so important. Because in these cases, the company probably doesn't even know what is going on. They probably have no actual understanding of what, the vocification is and even if they do see it and it's like okay why, why did this game sell so badly damn i thought people like this this thing and then the company gets to shrug its shoulders and go like oh i don't know i must weird maybe if we try a little bit more progressive nonsense instead of ever mentioning that it was probably the translation that caused the west to not like the product This is how a company can go woke without ever actually having any woke people in it. Yeah, it, this, this is the thing, though. This is why I think that we are seeing the end of this, or at least the beginning of the end of this, right? Because there's only so many failures like this that a company can tolerate before they start course correcting. Yes. And I think, I think we are approaching that point. So I know there's a lot of doomers. There's doomers in the chat. I know that V is a doomer. You're kind of a doomer, Arch. But I'm actually pretty hopeful about the future. All right. The failures are starting to, to, to rack up. The loss in profits is being felt. People are getting laid off. We are so reaching, we are reaching that point where something will break and there will be a change. And I think things will actually get better. I am not a doomer dev. I am an absolutionist. What do you mean by that? The mistake may never be done again. We must cleanse the earth, dev. The planet must be made pure and clean again. And to do so, we are going to have to do some mildly distasteful things. But trust me, at the end, the old saying, rather red, and are the dead, more correctly, than red, well, I think that was a underutilized slogan, Dev. And I think it should make a return. <laughs> okay. Salt to the earth, absolute, absolute, total, and unquestioning moral hegemony. Very important, very important. All right. I guess I can do some super chats now. When I find the window, that is. When I find the window. Is that the window? That's the window. Let's see, uh, where did we let off? Not there, not there, not there. Ah, uh, here I think. Uh, not a band account asked, what do you think of the rise of US MAGA fascism? So we didn't really answer that one. Do you know anything about MAGA fascism, Dev? Not really. I mean, I know about MAGA communism, if you heard about that. MAGA communism. You haven't heard nope. that before? I have, really? I have not heard about MAGA communism. Hold on, let me just look it up here. All right here we go. I, I'm gonna. It's. It, you can go to over to. Uh, go over to socialism 101. Okay. Yep. They support working class emancipation while conserving most of the social conservative beliefs, such as being anti-LGBTQ, anti-abortion, anti-woke, pro-Trump, and they're generally uh, what the leftists derisively call 
paternalistic socialists. Okay. Have you heard about uh, paternalistic socialists? No. Or it's like it's it's paternalistic. Sometimes it's patriotic socialist, but basically, it's it's a form of socialism that you saw in Marxist Leninist movements, like like Soviet aligned movements, where it's it's basically just like state socialism with a hefty dose of patriotism and and love for the nation. I see. Well, if anything, there doesn't necessarily sound like there's a lot of. Uh fascism in the MAGA movement, at least I have yet to see any. Um, I do know that there was all kinds of accusations about supposed white nationalism within the MAGA movement, but a lot of that seemed to be linked back to the very nice people on both sides thing, which has been taken pretty far out of uh, context. Uh, there's also, of course, people just showing up to uh, MAGA rallies, I guess, with various... Uh, Panaphernalia, shall we say, which, well, the thing is, you can't really prevent that in the same way that people show up to Democrat rallies with communist shit all the time, and yet nobody really ever mentions it, so unless we start seeing something significantly more uh, spicy for the MAGA movement, I don't think they're fascist. Well, I mean... You did have Nick Fuentes supporting him for a while, but I think a lot yes, of question. people like that Fire kind of, the they stopped supporting <laughs> Trump for not being right wing enough. Uh, hmm, possibly. <laughs> I, I've seen a lot of very far right people who say that like Trump is not right wing enough. He's a traitor to us. It's like, oh, okay. Okay, oh. Nick. Where are you going? There you go, I guess. Now what? Here we go. Okay, I went over to... Uh, I wanted to find another definition here. I went over to Prol Wiki. So, the proletarian Wikipedia. Mega communism is an alt-right, neo-fascist subset of the patriotic socialist movement in the United States and an online slogan which calls for the, unif the unification of Marxists and the reactionary MAGA movement in order to oppose the globalist elite. Uh-huh, okay. This is starting to sound awfully retarded and complex, but okay, sure. Yep. So basically the, the idea is it's all of the populists on both the far left and the far right should unite into one movement to combat basically the, the, the liberal global he hegemony. That's, that's the view of the mega-communists. Well, I mean, I'm all for combating Brussels, I guess, but... I don't think I'll be doing so alongside the communists anytime soon. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> think they can be trusted, honestly. Rarely enough. There we go. Um, mega communism is comparable to the Strasserite faction of the Nazi party, given their mutual opposition to finance capital and globalism, as well as their pro-rural, pro-small business, nationalist attitude, effectively echoing Strasser's guild socialism. Everything is socialist at all times, all around you, and you must <laughs> yeah. you must point yeah, it out so... loud. <laughs> so like 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 Mussolini and like the Strasser brothers, the mega communists just seem to be like another of the pipelines that moves people between the socialist and fascist movements. Socialism and fascism. The two brothers between which we are constantly fucking pulled, it seems. Yep. Yep. Man, so I ended up reading a a debate between one of the Strasser brothers and Hitler back before Hitler had consolidated his power. And they basically had the same kind of conversation where where Hitler called Strasser a degenerate Bolshevist and Strasser called Hitler um, a reactionary nationalist. And it's like, oh, so it turns out that you guys don't actually agree that much. You're just in the same group because you hate liberals. I would you fucking love. I God, I I wish YouTube was around back then. That would be brilliant. I would love <laughs> to, to see that. Them. Yes, that would be a fantastic <laughs> debate. Like, I yes, no, that would be amazing. I would love to see Hitler versus like Mussolini, for example, debating the finer points of fascism. 
and how race fits into it, etc. <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be absolute fucking Kino content. Well, that was basically what killed the uh, the fascist international, right? I they I, did, I they them, tried I? that, but they only I think they only tried that like once or something and it didn't go anywhere. They had, they had, they had two, yeah. So so M Mussolini like spent his his youth as as a socialist like organizing various socialist movements, right? And the socialists had the Socialist International where basically there'd be an international an an international convention where all of this all the leaders of all the various socialist parties across the world would show up and discuss theory. And try to unify what direction they're going to take. And there's like, I think you know, the the, the third socialist international is probably the most famous one because there was some big, there was some big feud there um, that I don't quite fully understand just yet. But Mussolini, coming coming out of socialism, said, you know what, I should organize a fascist international and do the same thing because it's worked for the socialists. So Mussolini organizes the fascist international, and all the various fascist parties in Europe send representatives and they all start talking over fascist theory the and the entire thing Fire dies the <laughs> because they're, they're split directly down the middle on whether or not they should hate the Jews <laughs> <laughs> because like half of the various fascist movements want anti-Semitism so to be a cornerstone of the theory and the other half want worship of the government to be, to be at the cornerstone and they can't, they can't like square they can't the circle. Agree. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's brilliant. So basically, the whole thing like falls apart. <laughs> it was it was kind of funny to like to, when I was reading into it, especially since, um, I mean, can I can I can I find here? Hold on, hold on. I mentioned I think I've told you Arch at this point a few times um, that I'm working on an Israel video, right? Israel and Palestine, yeah, because you haven't pissed off quite yeah. enough people. He's making a pro-Palestine yeah. video, chat. Yeah. So, as I've been looking into just the history of, of how Israel was founded, um, there's a lot of right-wing sentiment in Israel right now. You know, they're very nationalist, um, with, with good reason. But I found, as I was digging through it, that the main driving force within Israel up until, like, at least 30 years ago, when it kind of changed over, was this, labor Zionism. Labor Zionism. Yep. Or socialist Zionism. It is the left-wing socialist variation of Zionism. And this is the main reason why you have, like, those work communes in Israel that various Israelis go and work on. You've heard about that, right? No. I, I, have, I have given Israel as little of my attention oh. as humanly possible, honestly. So if you... Yeah, a kibbutz, right. A kibbutz, kibbutz. Is, an, is an intentional community in Israel that was based on agriculture. And basically the, the idea is um, if you want to move to Israel, uh, if you, and, and if you're like a, if you're ethnically Jewish, part of the process is working on a kibbutz. I so see. You, you go to yeah, so you, you go to these uh, these very agrarian communities and you work for the good of the community. And it's, it's part of you contributing to to the wider Israeli population is working on a kibbutz. Um, so, yeah, labor Zionism is just basically like the marriage of Zionism and Marxism. And it was it was a major driving force in in the establishment of Israel, because to their credit, um, they actually did a lot of work. Like they didn't just laze around like today's Marxists did. They said, no, 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 we are actually agrarians. We're actually workers. We're going to work the land for the benefit of our people. And so they, they started building these institutions where they would actually turn very unproductive land that's basically a desert. And they actually like did these massive agricultural product uh, projects and they brought in water and a whole bunch of stuff. And they started actually building things of value, which uh, which the, the people who were there before under the Ottomans, they just they didn't do any of it. Right. Yep. So the, the, the re, they, were, they were motivated to do this because basically like definitely before the Holocaust, but it ramped up after the Holocaust. The idea was basically, okay, no one in the world is ever going to give us a fair shake. We need a state where we control things because wherever, wherever we go, we're getting fucking killed. So we, we desperately need our own country and our own people working our own land. And so they, they basically used labor Zionism to, to set up these massive agricultural projects so that they would be food independent and they wouldn't have to rely on like trade with other nations. Basically, the Jews have found a beautiful combination of fascism and communism. 
<laughs> yeah, pretty much. And that was kind of how uh, how things went for a while. Is it was. Let's see here. The the Zionist movement kind of fell. The the labor Zionist movement fell out of uh, fell out of favor as Israel became more technologically developed. They didn't really need it anymore. But it was basically a stepping stone of social organization that was useful because um, everyone around them they did, they had like almost no social organization in the wake of the Ottoman collapse. So they they weren't. I I, I guess they weren't like extremely. They were socialists, but they they viewed socialism as a stepping stone towards liberalism, which is kind of the opposite of what usually happens. You know what I mean? That is an interesting idea. Yes. Hmm. Kibbutz. I like that word. <laughs> kibbutz. The the kibbutz. The kibbutz. I don't know. I like that word. That's a good word. Kibbutz. Where people who have to... See, I like that too. It's like, okay, you want to be in our country? Yes, okay. Well, you're going to work at a farm now for however long we tell you to. You know... I think, I it's, I think, I I think you, have, you, have to work, you have to work there a couple of years, I think. A couple and, of and here's years, the too. Hmm. Yeah, so you go to a kibbutz and they provide housing and they provide food, and but you can't leave and you have to work. And then after a couple of years, you're a citizen. Hmm. It's, it's 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 basically it's like it's like non-military civil service basically. See, I like that, but let's do uh, military and civil service, both of them. <laughs> let's do both of. First, you've got to work on a farm for five years, then you've got to serve in the military for five years, and if you're still there after all of that, then you get to stay. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. I don't see any any real problems with it whatsoever, honestly. Ah, uh, Belial. Philut had forests fall out, I'm presuming. They were just radioactive in mutant hellholes. Plants were alive and would kill you. If you know Dick all about Fallout, this is an okay TV show compared to the other slop out there. For fans, it's spite. It is... Ah, uh, no, I don't think so. I, th I think it was a pretty goddamn bad show. And I do think it took enormous liberties with the law. And I do also think it reduced all of the preceding ones to basically irrelevancies. Thoronson, you hear oh. the female custodians are a thing now. Nope, don't believe it. Reject. Is it actually happening? Is it finally happening? Uh, I haven't heard of it. Are they going to? Okay. <laughs> what, one one last word on on labor Zionism. I just want to point out that uh, the Jews were the only ones to ever actually make socialism work. I suppose. <laughs> and I think it's because they used it for like. 40 years and then abandoned it. it it's it's one of those things where like because it's a form of social organization it's better than it's better than nothing it's better than anarchy um but it's it seems to be it's it actually seems more proper as like a stepping stone towards more advanced forms of social organization which is how they used it so maybe, maybe that's socialism's rightful place you know it, it's it's not the utopia it's not the end goal it's something that you dabble with a little bit before you eventually move on to something that's more serious. You know what I mean? Possibly. And I did find the female custodies thing now. Ah, of course it. Oh, of you did? Of course that's the thing. There, apparently there's a snippet from the Codex, which refers to a uh, custodian as a she. Oh, boy. Female so, Space Marines, P.I. I just... P.I. just super chatted $2. Did Iran attack Israel? I decided to look it up. Yes. Less than an hour ago, Iran has launched more than 100 drones toward Israel. Beginning oh. a retaliatory attack. Hello there. Okay. I guess we're going to warn the Middle East. Now let's see if Biden's uh, promises that he would defend Israel are true or not, I guess. Fire is the answer. <laughs> wow, that's going to be a bit of a shit show. Yep. Iran launched 100 drones toward Israel. They're expected to arrive at Israel in a couple of hours. And they're expected to, to be armed with some sort of ballistic missiles. Okay. Well. Let's see what happens. It might be a shit show. 
It could be. It could be quite the fair shit show. An amusing one, no doubt. Uh, Alpha Kenny Body. There actually is a lot of credibility to Voltec launching the nukes. The nuke in Nuketown had a Voltec logo on it. To the point where it would cause mass nuclear war? I doubt it. Not to mention, Voltec has very little reason to do so, particularly considering the whole generation ship thing. Uh, Ranger Hale, don't you love how weirdos can redefine really words like fascism to mean whatever serves them best to pretend like it wasn't a brother of communism? Well, yes, th the very fact that we had to quite slowly rediscover the fact that that is true speaks volumes, right? Because the idea that fascism and socialism are not left and right wing, but left and left wing... That was controversial, still up until like a year or so ago. Hell, Service it's probably still controversial citizenship. today. I mean, it's still controversial because it's not exactly true. The, the, the fascists are more centrist, but it's still. Absolutely true, Dev. Left wing versus left wing, the Harris cause of the all question. violence. Fire they're, the they're more centrist, they're more centrist. <laughs> okay, Dev, if you want to assume the, if you, if you want to grant the fascists the centrist position. I do, actually. So be I think it they're, upon your they're, they're head. like they're like authoritarian centrists. Yes, that's true. Mm. So here, um, also this happened four hours ago. So you Iranian can... troops have begun seizing Israeli ships going through the Strait of Hormuz. Oh, okay. Well, that'll wow. be fun for them, I'm sure. Ar Iran's like Iran's going ham. They're starting it, dude. They're going. Okay. Well. Fuck it, let's get to it, boys. Another war in the Middle East. I'm sure that'll be lovely for the West to get involved in. <laughs> uh, Zedekai. Bold of Bethesda to screw over modders since they're the ones who make their buggy track playable in the first place. Oh, they've, they've been seeking to find a way to screw over modders for quite some time now. Uh, Frog Jupiter. Deb, do you plan to watch the A24 Civil War film? I have no idea what that is, sorry. Uh, it's the, the Civil War movie. It's uh, be, uh, the Civil War between California and Texas. Right, You haven't right. heard, heard about this? Oh. No, I haven't, sorry, sorry. Oh, oh wait, yes, I have. Like, and, and there's, there's like, basically all the... Is this the, is this the movie where all of the various um, factions are, like, retarded on the map? Like yeah. states that would not work together are like working together for some reason. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about now. Got it. Yep. <laughs> so someone in the chat asked why centrism. Okay, listen. On the authoritarian spectrum, right? You have you have like the Soviet types on the left. You have the fascists in the middle, and then you have the monarchists on the right, and that's your authoritarian spectrum right there, because they're all authoritarians. They're all they're all like oppressive governments. But they're they're not all the same thing. Zero Firewater says the purple state woman is the red bridge where all the bad actors flow from, since he's intentionally ignorant because he's a communist. This is true. He also says I don't hate the purple state woman because he's giving them the endless benefit of the doubt. While if they were in our position, they'd show no mercy. Also, Dev is wrong. We aren't winning yet. Well, we're, we're definitely winning. We're heading in the direction of winning, but Dev would be the first one up against the wall if his friends were to be victorious. It is true. It is true. What friends? Socialists don't like me. Mm, yeah, that's true. You don't have a lot of friends, <laughs> and, do you? And, and, and the, the more left-leaning people that I do know are rapidly moving towards our positions. Listen, guys, guys. Brianna Wu is watching a Sargon video. It's happening finally. <laughs> Things are actually changing. You know, he he couldn't sit down and and get it through Anita's skull, but he he is actually changing the minds of other people. Believe it or not. Uh, Brendan Lucas, some overseas have access to nuclear weapons. Those weren't NCR troops. Is never explicit. The Voltec fired the nukes. That's the running gag. Uh, they were explicit NCR troops. Literally, the the sign above the. Um, the, 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 the woman's headquarter reads NCR headquarter. 
they were NCR. They, no doubt about it. And they, they do, they do say quite explicitly that they did fire the nukes. They, they're planning it. They're talking about it. They're talking about shooting the nukes. They're talking about killing everybody, resetting civilization. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, one can cope. One can seethe. One can think that maybe it wasn't as bad as it looked. But yes, yes, it was as bad as it looked. Uh, Belial, the US was planning to nuke the world, but they were still setting up the vaults and the ship to get off world when the bombs dropped. The world was running out of energy because the US didn't share microfusion. Well, now it's called fusion, actually. Uh, they, Dr. Topo, Dev, you really don't believe in malice, do you? He doesn't. He's a sweet summer child, and we should all beat him. God damn it, I actually said so many times. <laughs> oh, hold on. Uh, Britain. Britain has pledged to defend Israel. Good, good. Oh. But Britain is relevant. Off, America. America must get on the field. Come on, Biden, you no. fat old bitch. Stand by your words for once, old man. Yeah, C5. Ah, yes, Dev. The corpo that are that has a history of fucking with modders isn't fucking with modders this time, even though they have done just this thing before. Malice, Dev. Okay, hold on. Malice. Has Bethesda specifically updated a game before just to add ray tracing, but the secret reason was actually to break your mods? There's no fucking way that's happened. Oh. I don't believe it. That's of insane. They have. They probably do it every weekend for shits and giggles. It's probably a, it's probably something that happens like once a week. Uh, Shiroi, by the holy Phoenix, blessed be his name. Remember the scriptures while journeying through Kenji. Man was created in the human image of Okran, Lord of Light. Women was created in the image of Narco, demoness of darkness. See, caution, children of Okran. Women are evil. It is true. Uh, so you know, game, gamey bro would probably need a rewrite to support ray tracing. My suspicion is that they are trailing, trialing for ES6 and Fallout 5. It would likely break mods. They probably are uh, doing a little bit of trials right now. Probably. Well, I, I've also heard that they're they're in the middle of remastering Fallout 3, so maybe they're testing things. Like who knows? Who knows? And Burn Burnton, hey Arch, apparently there's female custodians in the new codex. The gate has fallen. Content, content. Uh, Mr. Okay, hold on. Oh. Hold on. So, yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, Biden said that yeah, he expects he Iran, Iran to attack Israel sooner rather than later. Yep. Yep. Yeah, no, he said that yeah. literally yesterday. So that's why I'm kind of hoping that he will actually go like, yeah, no, I'm going to I'm gonna do what Fire I said I was going to do for once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> apparently, he was like walking to get into a limo to go back to the White House a couple hours ago, or like like w w whenever this this attack kicked off, he was like, "Mr. President, you have to return to the White House." So he he was like walking out to a limo, and like as as always, the reporters are all like shouting at him. And as he was walking away, he was just like, "I called it." <laughs> it's like okay, all right, Biden, I can appreciate the joke. I mean, if if he actually does stand up and does what he's supposed to do now, I will at least have a degree of respect for Biden. A small one, one that I uh, retain the right to forget all about in the future. But, okay. Well, there's, mm -hmm. there's something there. There's something there. Possibly. Mr. Twist Fantasy, Arch, any chance you'll stream New Vegas? It's on sale on Steam and it's dirt cheap. Uh, pay me. <laughs> it's a very long video game, okay? It's a, very, it's, a, it's a very long video game. Well, unless you just, you know, ignore the video game portion of it, I guess, and just rush to the ending. In which case, it's probably not that long of a video game, but it is a, Service guaranteed citizenship. It's a long video game. Uh, Dreyfi, haven't played in modern games much, still play Fallout 4, Skyrim, Bioshock series, Age of Empires 2, and other games for that time. I haven't expanded much outside of that. That might not be a bad idea. Perhaps simply just placing one's head in the sand and ignoring everything in the outside world is actually a very good idea. I think so. At the very least, I don't think it's a bad idea. 
John Jim, I got here late, but Dev, New Vegas isn't better than Fallout 1 or 2 in story. Tell her to stop pegging you in the ear, Dev. That isn't helping you. No, terms New Vegas of, is better than 1 and 2. In terms of story... I think it's more difficult to determine in terms of story, to be fair. Uh, but in terms of, like, gameplay... Oh, boy. Uh, the, the gameplay of the early Fallout games... Rough. Very rough. Yep. It was good back then, but it's hard to go back to now. Yes. Uh, rough. Very, 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 very rough. In many, 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 many places. The uh, the random encounters in particular will make you scream just a little bit, I think. Just, just a yeah. little bit. And also just the fact that, like, it was one of those games that... It was pre-internet, so there was no looking There's anything up. Question. So Fire is the, the game is designed for you to play it very slowly and methodically and to search everything and to understand it like intricately. So that's the one game that you get. But in the age of the internet, you just look up where to go. It's like, oh, okay, you just go there. You do this. Okay. Yep, and parts of it can be quite frustrating because it definitely came from the era where you would expect it to just kind of suffer, honestly. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Some uh, some of those uh, encounters were terrible. Really, really, genuinely quite terrible. Yeah, I have I have memories of playing some old games, some console games, some some like early Harry PC games, question. where it's just Fire like that answer. was the game I was playing for three months, and I was just stuck on a puzzle for like a week, just loading the game back up. Okay, I'm gonna try this. Oh, that didn't work. I'm gonna try this, and like, I was I was pretty young at the time, right? But still. Like the the old FMV games in particular, like holy shit! If you didn't have the codes, or you didn't have the puzzle, the, the the actual solution to the puzzles. Sometimes you'd just be there trying things for hours. Mm hmm. Yep. It could be pain. It could be a lot of pain. Mm hmm. It could really, really suck. Uh, LC five. The ass is the first mod for all Fallout games. Good. As it, I would need to tell the girls at my gym to stop training legs. It's going to stop being real women. They aren't real humans. If they have glutes, if they have glutes. I mean, are they women if they have glutes, Dev? Can they be allowed to be women with glutes? I don't know. If they're trans women, they're allowed to have glutes. Mm, Dev, disgusting. Dev, why? <sighs> why does Dev have to make everything about trans women, huh? Why? Why, Dev? He refuses to answer. He just makes everything about trans women regardless and then, walk, uh, then walks on. Okay, Dev. Okay. Heresies the uh, guy in the bridge. Fire Gotta love the, the ob answer. obvious and sheer spite they have. Indeed. Dry feet. Isn't it a writer's job to make people care about the story? Uh, in the past, it was. Mercy next did once. Sorry, but this was all intentional destruction. It was. Uh, Mr. Luckless, there are no women in gaming, only body type 2. Correct. Uncle Shio, I've heard that BS, G BGS employees dislike New Vegas, Bethesda, I'm assuming. New Vegas because more popular with the fans than any Fallout they've made. I think so too. Like, I genuinely do. I think these are petty goddamn people. Boog Hideki Kaima. Kaima is no longer Platinum Studios. Who's that, Dev? Dev, you're you're more of a weeb than I am. Who is that? Dev <sighs> He went to take a shit, didn't he? He he actually did. He actually went to take a shit. Okay. No, oh. sorry. I am about to go though. I am about to go take a shit. But and I didn't notice my, my mic was unmuted, sorry. Um Hideki Kamaya, he is the guy who made Bayonetta. I see. And after he made Bayonetta three, then he made Bayonetta Origins, and after that game released, he uh, he left the studio. So the Bayonetta creator is no longer at the head of the studio. Hmm. And will Bayonetta survive this? Do you think? Uh, probably not, because Kamiya is kind of a genius. He 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 really is what made those games as good as they were. It, it also, by the way, I know like everyone shat on uh, made Bayonetta three back in the day. I made a video that was also kind of shitting on a little bit as well. It was an okay game, could have been better, but it was it clearly wasn't Kamiya's fault. 
like the the, ma- the main controversy surrounding Bayonetta three was the voice actress for Bayonetta going public and saying like they refused to pay me and it was all it all ended up being bullshit and like it was a whole fucking thing. But Bayonetta three was actually okay. I th- I think people like people saw a new protagonist coming into the series and thought they were doing the whole like bait and switch replace Bayonetta thing, which they kind of did, but not really. Um, and I think they people jumped the gun did, on. But not really. Well, yeah, because there was still a fair amount of Bayonetta in the game. This, this wasn't like a, an Obi Wan Riva situation where Riva is like the, obviously the, the the main the main part of the fucking show and where the show was going to continue from that point onward because she goes off on her own adventure, right? So it's it it wasn't quite the same thing. By the way, if it was the same thing, the new character they added would have been black, but she wasn't. <laughs> so. It was, it was, it was, they were basically just doing the Trunks storyline of bringing in like a mysterious new person who ends up being from the future and ends up being the daughter of Bayonetta, just like how Trunks is the son of Vegeta. It was the same type of story. Um, hold on. Dev also thinks Bayonetta is a lesbian. No, I think Bayonetta is bisexual because she said that she's bisexual. No such thing as bisexual, Dev, only gay. Well, so then you think Bayonetta is a lesbian? Definitely. <laughs> Even though she has sex with men and has a kid. Yep, that's what we call a good cover, Dev. <laughs> so, so, so basically, like Bayonetta three, even though it it, it kind of fit the mold in terms of the culture war of that type of replacist story, it wasn't the same thing. It was actually a decent little game, but I do think now that Kamiya is gone, uh, we're not going to get a good Bayonetta game again. Definitely not. He he did the original trilogy. He did Bayonetta Origins, and then that's that. It's done. All right. Now, now I will go to the washroom. So BRB. Now I will go poop. Most thanks anyone. Overwatch is an example of chick with dicks, guys. I mean, yes. And hey, just adding a dick to a chick, mm, not the worst thing. Adding balls though. Oof. No, big no. Ministry of Wrong Thing. You guys heard of the Twitter account Your Fav is Tranny. It's supposed to be a gimmick account that praises queer coded characters. It turns out the account is a massive troll and only features characters who have self deleted. Oh, that is funny. I like that. Uh, Ikik Rat Germany gave back the Benin bronzes to Benin and they instantly got sold to a private collector. I did hear about that, yes. Like, they gave back, like, here, have this artifact. There's, oh, that's cool. Let's sell it now. Uh, PSU, Arch, since I told you about the orangutan prostitute, have you heard about the strip club in South America that have the show where you watch a... Woman F by Donkey. I don't which, con- which country. I'm sure they do. I- it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest, actually. I-, I think it would be entirely normal. Mr. Floppy Knickers. It would be easier to take Dev's takes more seriously if you couldn't hear the shit-eating grin in his voice. He's just as bad faith as Destiny and Vos at this point. I'm trolling. The I'm trolling personality sucks. Dev is weak. He's naive. That's the problem with Dev. Boog, how many multis did you pull, V? Did you get them? How many multi? Ah, oh, Nikkei. And by the way, high possibility the next Nikkei collab is dead or alive. Do I? Okay. Did play Nikkei a little bit, but uh, the th- those games do eventually make me run out of patience for them. Uh, so, Jad, I refuse to buy any Ubisoft so way back Zip when they released that shitty cell shaded Prince of Persia game because Ubisoft told PC gamers to fuck off. They did do that, and they have done that, and they will continue to do that. Ubisoft are bad people, and uh, Anno 1800 was a pure fucking fluke, but it is good. Uh, Mr. Luckless, Dev refuses to believe it, despite it coming straight from the horse's mouth. There's been plenty of examples of them openly saying their intentions, this is just burying your head in the sand. He does do that. Glow in the dark, Holocaust was incompetent, not intentionally or malicious, because one person doing it could be incompetence. Dev! Dev 2024. Yes! Yes, glow in the dark. Dev 2024. The Holocaust was incompetence, not malice. 
Arma's foul. Occam's razor. Dev, you need to prove that they are simply doing it out of incompetence instead of malice. The overwhelming majority are malicious actors. Gramsci has compelled them with malicious ignorance. Correct. It is all Gramsci. It all stems back to that old sucker. Like an Italian. Mercenary 21. If only you knew what I do about hidden leaders, Dev. What I knew. What I know about hidden leaders, yes. Mercy of wrong thing. What difference does it make if just... Uh, of you people, who are in charge are the ones with malice. If everyone else is beneath them are unable to do anything, then the entire structure is malicious. Of course. So, yeah, Dev is making the communism has never been tried before, while V and Arch are making the argument every time it's tried, it's failed in the same exact way. Intent is irrelevant, Dev. Correct. Well, intent is relevant. If they intend to be gay about it, if they intend to be wokeist about it, then they must go under the steamer. Yes, the thing we use to pave the road. That one, the big heavy thing. That one, under it, under it. Squish. We will work them into the fucking roads, we will. That way they can always be close to the laborers. Zero, Dragon Root from Sekiro comes to mind. Dragon Root from Sekiro. I remember this word, but I don't remember what it does now. I played Sekiro, finished Sekiro, beat Sekiro, did well in Sekiro, was amazing at Sekiro. Vulture 1066, we need a cage fight, V versus Dev. Mm, my money would be on Dev. He's bigger and fatter. V's scrawny, precise. Boog, if Stella Blade makes bank, they'll try to co-opt it. Yes, they will. Absolutely. It, it, eventually, it will be Stella Blade was always woke, because strong female uh, uh, protagonist. They will. Go in the dark. Whatever surface level victory you guys claim will be meaningless unless you drive a stake stake through the heart. Wokeness or PC, it will turn stronger. I agree. Absolute, absolute cultural hegemony is what we must uh, reach for. PC, two hundred thousand played the demo for a particular asset, but will they pay the price? That's the question. I hope they do. I, al I almost want to order a copy, even. I'm going to wait for them to release it on Steam. Then I'm going to buy it, and I'm probably going to play it on stream. Because I want it to be a success. Mercenary 21 sorry, Dev, we may be winning, but I see a new care. <laughs> there might be a nuclear alternative. Why are you hating? Wish me luck, lads. I'm traveling next Sunday to the land responsible for more Independence Days than any other. England. Congratulations, and hope you have fun. Just don't get stabbed if you're going to London. Yeah, careful. Jeff D, bring Rosa back as a recurring guest. Mm, not impossible, not impossible. Belial, if they hadn't called the new ones Tomb Raider, new ones, it would have been good. Honestly, find her new design more attractive, but I like tomboys. I mean, they could have just not made it Lara Croft. Service True. Guaranteed like, they could have just, okay, we're going to do Tomb Raider, uh, but not Tomb Raider. Let's see. It's got all of the Tomb Raider stuff, but not Lara Croft. Now, I do imagine I would then be like, yeah, but why not just make it Lara Croft, though? <sighs> but, uh, looking at what they do to her. Hmm. Zero, unless a woman has kids, cups won't really change. Ah, have you heard of our Lord and Savior, Silicone? And hello, La Rosa. See you there in chat. Uh, Blondie, it's been 30 years since Naomi committed the genocide. Oof. The Vulture 1066. What is your favorite safe sci fi show? Favorite sci fi show? Hmm. Show specifically. Favorite sci fi show? Hmm. Let me jog my memory here. Favorite sci-fi show. See, immediately, stuff leaps to mind, but it's not sci-fi. The Orwell has got to be up there, but I don't know if it's my favorite, because the first season wasn't great. Um, it, it was a little bit too much humor in the first season, in my opinion, when they, they could have taken themselves far more seriously. Um... Honestly, I'm more of a history show guy, so I'm, I'm just trying to rack my brain for, like, good sci-fi. I Fire didn't mind the Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> I actually thought Battlestar, uh, Battlestar, Battlestar Galactica was pretty good, but the only problem is that it ruined entertainment. It unironically did. It fucking ruined entertainment, because after Battlestar Service Galactica, everything had to be Battlestar Galactica. Everything became Battlestar Galactica, and that did a lot of damage to science fiction in general. 
Um, Westworld season one I thought was a lot of fun. Season two was terrible. Season three should never have happened. Uh, never watched Firefly, by the way. Because I know it ended in one season and I refuse to watch something that ended after one season because I'm just going to be like, it's a cliffhanger, I hate you. Um, the Man in the High Castle was cute, but only really from like a hey, look at this, this is kind of funny perspective. If it was only about, um, if it was only about the Nazi guy, whose name escapes me now, I would have adored it. It would have been great, because his storyline was good. It was really good. Hmm. Well, Firefly, uh, was a good show, but it's kind of become, like, people's dream cast you know what i mean yeah where like everyone looks back on it, it's like it was amazing it just didn't get the chance and it was pretty good and it was screwed over by the network but i mean it's a joss whedon show and um joss whedon himself is like mid quality he's done some good stuff and some really bad stuff i th i think i'm gonna have to say Battlestar galactic is my favorite science show, science fiction show in despite of the fact that I recognize that it ruined entertainment. Because I enjoyed it tremendously for a few seasons. It did go retarded at the end, no doubt about it. But yeah, I, I think so. Like, because even like the X-Files, which is what I would have mentioned probably otherwise. I, X, I tried to rewatch it not that long ago. It hasn't aged that, that well, honestly. Really? Um, yeah, I, I think it didn't age that well. Hmm. Hum, hum, hum. Uh, Blondie, the political ideology Dev pres prescribes to a subscriber to anyway, is the one that lets him abuse Dave, beat his GF, eat like a pig, and groom his audience. They say Giga Chat. I mean, that sounds about good, yeah. I like yeah. that one too. Mm hmm. Reverend Norse, Dev stuck in the early 2010s. We know it isn't ignorance anymore. Art is right. It's malice, and we shall tolerate it no more. To the wall with them. Dev, very compelling. But Listen, people. the whole well, point that the competency crisis has been a right-wing talking point is because it's not just malice. Dev, wall, face, compelling point, all that, wall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Alexander Briant, Iran just launched. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, listen, America, listen, 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 listen. What you need to do is just like ship everything you can to Israel. Like all that shit you were wasting on the Ukrainians, ignore that. Send it all to Israel. All of that. All. Oh, oh, oh. Actually, a good, a good team. Uh, I just re just recognized. Just remembered. Um, for all mankind, for all mankind, it's a um, science fiction show on Apple Plus of all things. Really good for all mankind. Really, really good. It might actually be my favorite or battle cycle guy. I just remembered it out of fucking nowhere. Anyways, send everything Israel wants. Send them nukes. Send them fighters, bombers, drones. I don't fucking care. May it turn it into the nuclear arsenal of the Middle East, okay? But do not send troops america do not get involved in another 30 year fucking occupation in the desert do not do not china will well, love on. it hold on hold on america should I send troops answer. no it should send it should send a hundred times more troops than it sent before and it shouldn't be an occupation no no, because it yes. has to be an occupation. Yes. There's no other option. Yes, there is. Well, the other option is burn Iran to the ground, but that's not going to happen. Yes. It's not going to happen. Yes, America total war, go. It's not going to happen. Do not get involved in another fucking 30-year occupation in the Middle East. Listen, listen, listen. The other occupations didn't work out. Listen, Americans, I know there's a lot of Americans listening. Even Rose is sitting in there saying the wrong opinion in Super Chats. Listen, listen. Americans are traumatized by Iraq. I understand. I understand. It's because you guys went in with a limp wrist. All right? You That's didn't go true. in. 
you went in not nearly hard enough, and that's why you got smacked around, all right? Go in with full force, the entire weight of the American machine behind it. Go with everything you have and burn it all to the ground and make them regret ever launching another suicide bomber ever again. I agree, 100%, absolutely. But take it one step further. A McDonald's on every street corner, followed by a Starbucks. Don't only turn the desert into a desert, turn it into an American desert, where the only thing that remains is the McDonald's sign. The if you're going to do this, Fire it's got to be full-blown <laughs> capitalist American imperialism. It's the only goddamn way. You've got to be Soviet. You've got to make the Soviets look like kind and caring conquerors. But it's not gonna happen. Service guaranteed citizens. It's not yep. gonna happen. It, it's time to do hell divers on Iran. Bring them democracy. It's it's not gonna happen. What's gonna happen? If America sends troops, it's gonna be an occupation, and it's gonna cost thousands of more lives and billions of dollars. Now, send the money to Israel. Why? Because Israel will do it. Israel will do what America cannot do, and it'll be far cheaper than the occupation. Okay, this so, is what's happening to to Russia with Ukraine. Like the West is buying the disarmament of Russia at fucking bargain bin prices. Yep, yep. So here's the thing, right? I think the reason that America did what it did in the two thousands is because they learned a few historical lessons, but took the the wrong the wrong message away from them, right? So in World War One, how do you punish Germany? Okay, well, you, you make them pay reparations. Well, they were already fucked, and now they have to pay back this massive reparation debt. That that, that was why they radicalized. Right? That was a big reason as to why Germany radicalized in between World War One and World War Two is because basically they they launched a war that they lost, and then and then the West, well, the so rest the of the West, since Germany's part of the rest, yeah. the West, but the rest of the West said, "Listen, you got to pay for what you did now because you're the bad guys here and you're the losers here, so you got to pay up for all the damages you caused." And so they were extracting this wealth from Germany that was already a loser in a war. And like, it was untenable. Of course, the Germans were going to reject this, right? Which is why you got World War II. Um, and after World War II, the Americans said, you know what? Instead of the stick, how about we give you a carrot instead this time? So yeah, you lost and yeah, you were evil. And yeah, we're going to purge all the Nazis, but we're going to help you rebuild. We're going to show you that there is a positive path forward. You don't have to be warmongers. You can join, you know, the, the enlightened moral community Germans. And the Germans said, okay. And then they did. And the Japanese said, okay. And then they did. And it's worked out pretty well for those nations, all things considered. Um, the issue is that the Americans looked at this and then said, "Oh, that's what we have to do. We don't have to like destroy our enemies. We have to. We have to. We have to. You know, cut off the head of the snake and then nation build and then make them our friends. And that works for some, for some enemy nations, but not for all of them because people aren't all the same. Cultures aren't all the same. All right. It will not work in the Middle East. That's well, the. No. This is the important part." It will not work in the Middle East. It worked for Japan. It worked for South Korea. It worked for it worked for Taiwan. It works for various places in in that area of the world. It worked for uh, for um for Eastern Europe. It worked for Germany. It worked for for Italy. Sir, it will not work in the Middle East because they have a different culture. They have a they have a different way of of looking at the world. They respect different values, and you cannot come to them with that liberal open arm approach. It's not going to work. You have to come. You you actually have to come into the into the Middle East with a stick and not with a carrot. Absolutely. It's just, simple. It's as simple as that. It is the stick or nothing at all, and the stick must not be allowed to rest. Allow not your stick to fall, America. If you're gonna do this, allow not the stick to fall. But <laughs> again, it's not gonna happen, which is why America just needs to not do it. Okay. You do it to disarm Iran. Absolutely. Absol you can destroy the Iranian military, and the only ones that have to bleed for it is going to have to be Israel. This is perfect. This is imperialism 101. But by God, don't try to occupy them. Yes, someone in the chat says, so burn the place down, and then when Hamas attacks, you cry? No, 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 no. Listen, you burn it down so hard that Hamas cannot attack. Yeah, there will be right? no Hamas. Who's going to fund yes. them? Yeah. And you know what? Israel is doing that right now in Gaza, and it's the right thing to do, frankly. All the leftists are screaming about, oh, my God, it's genocide. They're killing. Oh. You know what? They attacked on October 7th. 
And as soon as they attacked, the Israelis said, all right, this is fucking insane. They amassed their forces and they went in and now they are basically going through Gaza, marching from north to south with flamethrowers, clearing out everything that moves. And that's what you have to do when you're in, when you're encountering a foe that simply wants to kill you and does not want to negotiate. You have to engage with them on that level. Anything else is just being naive. Absolutely. The stick is the way. Blondie says, I think Menefrego's phrase was, don't give a damn. Uh, Maybe. Dev, you're Italian. (laughs) Uh, I don't care. I don't give a damn. I mean, it's the same thing, really. It's the same meaning. Again, that needs to uh, paint it on the side of every American gun, every aircraft, every tank. Menefrego. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God, dude. We've got to take back the term, Dev. It meant something good once, I'm sure. <laughs> Did it? I don't know, but I'm just going to go with it. Menefrego chat. <sighs> Nick Kurkira, that's Dev in charge of not trying to defend Trudeau. Oh, that's, that's difficult. I don't defend Trudeau ever. When have I ever done that? Mr. Luckless, Dev is still wrong, but it says that everything must be made political in order to protect it from being used politically. That is some extra level double think going on. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. No, I'm correct. Much saint, all these video game television series makes me long so for, and I can't believe I'm saying this, long for the days of the Uwe Boll movie. I mean, <laughs> they were funny. It's one of those things where, like, it's the same as, um... The, the Uwe Boll movies are kind of the same as the uh, the Star Wars prequels. Yeah, they're bad, but we didn't know how good we had it because they were at least bad in a sincere way. Like, there is a meaning in those movies. They did want something, and it was roughly aligned with our values. They just did it very poorly. Mm-hmm. Okay, here. Here, you know what? That's the difference, okay? Something that is pure incompetence is the is the Star Wars prequels, all right? But but their heart's in the right place, but they're purely incompetent. Okay? Something that is pure subversion, that's The Last Jedi. Yep. Uh, Linton Hill, do not argue with a fool. He will drag you down to his level and beat you with experience. Hmm, Debbie's a mud wrestler. Am I? Artemis Fowl. Arch, ask Dev to answer. What is the political point behind the image I sent to you is? Uh, you probably know this one. It's the one of the... Um, the the anime girl eating a hamburger. Oh, what do you want me to to say? Is there political content in this image? Yeah, what I is mean, the political message? I mean, if there's if there's political content in that image, it's probably something to do with like the state of Japan post um post World War Two and how it's basically become Americanized. Well, no. There's, what, there's... I, what I'll simply say is, the political point behind this image is that the leftist will look at it and go, okay, um, so I exist in a space where I'm not allowed to do whatever I want. That space is Burger King. So I need to politicize Burger King because my ideology claims moral authority. So the moment I'm allowed to make Burger King political, I can then say, but my, my, my moral politics are correct. Therefore, you must abide by me. That is why the leftists will go, Burger King is a capitalist imperialist endeavor that has subverted the Japanese people into subservient slave, uh, slave, uh, slavery as an inferior species that they are now pushing their vile, fat food on to turn them fat and indulgent. There you and go. see, hold on, I will agree with them and then I'll just say that it's good. Yeah, exactly. And that is the answer. Yep. It's not to say that That's this image answer. isn't political. It's to say, yes, fatten the Japanese. Boigers for life. Yep. But see, to arrive at that, that position, you must accept the initial premise that things actually are political. Because they are, unfortunately for us. Yeah, and so word style nonsense says chat. Yes, because it is all about making the arena political. Because in the political arena, the person who recognizes that it is political will obviously have an advantage. Yeah. Basically, yeah. So it, it, they'll be on. fighting with both eyes open. And you'll be there blindfolded, like, but it's not politics, though. So exactly right. It, it, th- that's the important part is that you you do have to unfortunately accept their framing, because 
they, they if you don't, then you will be you will be fighting disarmed while they are armed. It's as and, simple as yeah. that. Like this, Jack says, again, why do you accept the premise? Because if you do not accept the premise, you are not fighting the battle. They will simply be the ones attacking you again and again and again. And all you can say in your defense is, nah, ah, and that's not an argument. Yeah. <laughs> Here, let me, let me put it this way. Okay, so this image, right? <laughs> you have... You have the leftist position of, okay, they're colonizing Japan. And then you have the chat's position, which is, it's not political. Okay, I understand. The issue, ultimately, is that you can actually have that non-political stance, but only in the company of friends. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, if you just want to if you just want to hang out and enjoy a cute anime where an anime girl eats a burger and not engage with the politics of it, that's actually fine. That's In fact, that's what most people do, and you should have a space to do that. But this, that space does not include an arena where you are going up against people who hate you, all right? Because if they hate you, they're coming to change things. They're, com they're coming to impose a moral order on the situation. And you saying, but it's not political, is not a defense against that. Yes. You have, to be, you have to be able to engage with the question. Yes. Because otherwise, you won't be fighting the battle. You will simply allow them to dictate the terms. You've, you've got to actually go up to them and explain to them why it is not. Because, fine, if there's nobody out to get you, then yes, it can be non-political. If you're not currently fighting a defensive battle against an outside force set on conquering you, then it can be non-political. But that's not the position we're in. Yep. Uh, Johnson Smith, everything is political is true, but it's to the degree or relevant. My relationship with my family is political, but it's mainly familiar, family, fam familial and love. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he also says. There's, there's someone in the chat who says morality is only for your friends. Here's the thing. That is the natural end result of the position that Arch and I are putting forward. And it's also a very negative thing. Like, if, if we're going to talk about the... um the you know the contradictions of liberalism that cause it to collapse into communism that is a contradiction of our position that can cause it to collapse into some form of immorality where you only have moral consideration for your friends and for your enemies you basically just do whatever you want to them and that is also bad in its own way and this i've, I've been thinking about this i think i think every ideology has a contradiction because ideology itself is a contradiction and that contradiction once you resolve it causes you to shift into another ideology which has which has another contradiction and this is how you move from political position to political position over time um the there, there's no real solution to this problem frankly it just it just is what it is um you know when you say morality is only for your friends like that sounds absolutely terrible but when you have, like, for example, if you have a crowd of people screaming, running down the street at you, and they're about to, like, attack you, and they're very clearly out for your blood, and there's a gun beside you, it doesn't matter what kind of morality you have, you're going to pick up the gun and shoot them, because you want to survive, right? It's, 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 it's a rough situation, but, but like, you, you do have to kind of, you have to, you have to admit that morality is only for your friends when you are in a dangerous situation. But nonetheless, when things are safe and when you're in control and you're in charge, you do have a moral obligation to rule your enemies with grace. It's one of those things. That is fair enough, yes. John Smith, Dev, you are correct. The conservatives see the relevance, though first and foremost, and most things are not relevantly political unless made so. Yeah, it's because uh, it the one of the um, the follow-ons from Gramsci was the second wave feminist movement in America, where they said something that goes something like the personal is political. They said this because they were looking at the world around them and going like, okay, but women doing chores is considered to be just normal and is thus then determined to not be political. Well, I disagree with this. I don't think women should do chores. Therefore, it is not personal. It is political. That was the one of the beginning of everything is political. You begin inserting politics into what is perceived by the wider society as normal. And again, if you don't have a defense against that, you are going to be overrun, as we have seen. The correct answer was, mm, no, women do chores. 
Well, it also it also has a, a pretty explicitly socialist underpinning, right? Because yeah, because it came from Gramsci. The, yeah, the 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 political sphere is the public sphere, right? Like that's the point of it. When something is political, then it can be uh, commented on by the entire populace. It's not it's not it's not subject to privacy because it's political. It's public. Um, so when you say the personal is political, well, the personal sphere is the private sphere, right? Like. If you if you have if you're in a relationship and it's you and it's your girlfriend and you have some sort of division of labor where she does more stuff in the house and you do more stuff outside of the house that's a personal arrangement I mean as long as like like you're not forcing her into it or she's not forcing you into it right like if you if you've both consensually come to this agreement um that is that's that's a personal arrangement it's a private arrangement you have set up your lives in a certain way that you like um and it's ba and, and the morality is based on the consent um but if the personal is political, what they're saying is the private is the public. That's what that actually means. So it, it's no longer just a private affair, how you and your girlfriend set up your life. It is now a public affair. And now the rest of society has a place to comment on it and say, no, no, hold on, hold on. You're mistreating your girlfriend because she does more work inside the house. doesn't matter if you both consented to it because now we've moved away from consent-based morality. Um, now, there, there. By the way, there are times in which you should move away from consent-based morality, but question. this is not one of those Fire times, in my opinion. <laughs> Joke. If anything is political, please explain the politics of a kitten chasing a laser pointer. Simple. The laser pointer is patriarchy guiding you around. It's it's the capitalist system <laughs> that is pre-created and that you are dancing to its tune without even knowing that you are dancing to its tune. Which is, by the way, the Gramscian argument for why the proletariat revolution didn't happen. Because people were so set and happy in current, like the, like the modern day sensibilities of capitalism that they could not consider any opposing political points. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. So, so Bill the Skaven says Dev must make everything political. He is Anita Sarkeesian, just a more male esque version. No, 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 no. You, you don't understand. All right. I don't make everything political. Everything is on its own. That's the point. And as long as you fail to accept that, you will lose the argument to the leftists who have accepted it. Uh, Artemis Fell, Hell Diver is a satire of liberalism, not the right. Um, I mean, no, no, <laughs> no. I mean, kind of. It depends on how you feel about managed democracy, right? Well, no, it, it entirely depends on the robot. If the robot is voting depending upon your actual characteristics, like it's able to go like, okay, answer these questions, I know what's best for you, and it actually knows what is best for you, then yes. But it is heavily implied that that is not what the robot is doing, and the robot is simply going, hey, you know what's best for you? A strong government. <laughs> so, so, so here's, here's the thing, right? Like, you, you do, there are forms of real-life managed democracy, and basically it's, it's a form where, where you can vote, but the voting doesn't actually change the policies that are put into place in the real government. Right. So in, in this form of social organization, voting becomes more like a religious ritual mm -hmm. where where you simply cast a vote. And that is a sign of your submission to the current order. It's not actually a method of changing that order. Um, now, there's a lot of doomers who, th who think that that describes our democracies. I don't think it does. I think you can actually change the direction of countries through voting. I'm not I'm not an anti-democracy doomer like that. Right. Um, but nonetheless, it's it's still not fascist. Because the fascists didn't arrange their governments in this way. They didn't use voting as a ritual of submission. Um, the fascists tended to simply declare states of emergency and then override the government entirely. Like, the, basically, the, the, the Soviets wrote entirely new laws from the ground up. They, they wrote new constitutions. They wrote full new legal codes. They rebuilt the law from the ground up to suit their purposes. But the fascists didn't do that. The fascists just took whatever system that was in place. Heresy's they attached question. an emergency Fire bill the that allowed them to um, declare a state of emergency and then disregard all law. And then they just kept they, they just kept renewing the state of emergency. So the, the Soviets had the ritual of submission through voting. The fascists didn't. The fascists didn't need it. So th these are two different ways that they they set up their their legal theories, basically. So this this is more uh, this is more like what the Soviets did than what the fascists did, basically. 
uh, Binary Eclipse, people still say Starship Troopers is a satire, which it is objectively not. Well, people still say a lot of dumb things. I mean, the, the movie is a satire, just a very bad satire, because it, it was adapting a novel that was not a satire. That's And, and basically, the, the director of the movie didn't get it. It is trying to be a satire, and even that is maybe giving it a little bit more credit than it frankly deserves. Uh, Frederick Ken Ken Henderson held over a satire of the EU with Bush-era propaganda from the US. Uh, from the EU? I mean, I think it's a better satire of the EU, sure. March 10, look up the localization of the of Lord of the Rings for the Soviet Union. You will get a glimpse of what we are in for. I don't know if I want to know. Uh, Ellis is around 222, those are all spelled differently. Uh, and don't forget, Buffalo, 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 Buffalo. I don't get that. What is that? What is that? That doesn't matter either. Trifee, good day. Good God, Dev. The word saw. So the word saw. Uh, nightmare. Clip can mean cut or fasten. Opposite. Or Turk fly. On that note, I hear relatively relatively res recently recently i'm guessing the story of the ghost stories translators being told the show was shit do what they want is a lie the show was well received in japan hmm. uh Popatot, i'm super late but i'll double time it though have either of you two or kibsen seen nuka break it was a fan-made series that was miles beef better than this shit i have not no uh, Belial, jam, pool, season, bat, as in club and animal. Uh, Diggy Geek for life. It's only political because they go in looking for politics. It's only problematic because they go in looking for problems. The key is overtly and subvertly. Baseball bat or foam finger, which hurts less. Baseball bat or foam finger, which hurts less? Bat? <laughs> no. Uh, Frog Jupiter, have you heard of War of Rights? It's an FPS set during the First Civil War. I recommend playing the Confederacy like the IRL. They tend Service to win battles. Of course they do, obviously. Uh, I heard it was shutting down, though. Uh, but that was around April, so maybe it was around April. Gabriel Nartier, Dev, the communist activists from the last century, were they incompetent or malicious? The ones that made the list and oppressed the contempt, the competent people, the competent people. Dev? Dev is pooping here. He poops a lot. It's just how Dev functions. No, no, no. I had to go turn on my own stream because we're starting in 15 minutes or so. Um, They were both, and it depends who you're talking about. The people more at the top, they were more malicious. The people at the bottom, they were more incompetent. That that was the whole point of, of Lenin's coalition of outsiders, is that they were less competent people who were loyal to the regime because the regime gave them increased status as, to what, as compared to what they had before. Uh, T. Bonals Gaming, the other reason to hire someone experienced and wet, wet behind the ears is to allow the company to indoctrinate them into the company's policies, ethics, and way of working. You can always simply just break people. That too is true. Well, at this, at this point, it's like a pipeline, right? Because they have woke stuff in schools, they have woke stuff in universities, they have woke stuff in companies. By the time you get to the company, you've already been swimming in it for a very long time. Yep, and it will just be normal by that point. Yeah, the the only real way to be exposed to thoughts outside of it are through alternative media, or like like going to 4chan, going to YouTube, uh, reading books that are not approved. I guess, like there there it, once you do that and you start seeing other perspectives, it becomes easier to to not be so captured by it. But if, but if all you're doing is simply going through the system, that's all you're going to see. It, and that's why, by the way, they do want to capture all the entertainment. Right, they do want to capture the the games and the movies and the anime and the shows because they don't they want they want basically their view to be normalized to the point that you, that everywhere you look you can't see an alternative view so it does become the normal um, and it's also why they hate YouTubers so much like and, and I'm not even talking about like the 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 extreme YouTubers like a Nick Fuentes or something just people who who put forward another point of view that is reasonable but it's not explicitly progressive. 
You know, it doesn't have to be racist. It doesn't have to be insane. It doesn't have to be overtly hateful. It doesn't have to be calling for a fascist dictatorship or for a monarchy or for anything else like that. Like, normal centrist people, they hate them because they they their existence is a pipeline away from that ecosystem they've been building. It is a break and a way away from the demoralization. Well, it's partially demoralization because they're, you know, they, they get demoralized by being constantly in this stuff, but it's also exposure to something new because like, here, imagine the person who is not demoralized. He actually thinks that the leftist stuff makes sense, but also he's never experienced any other idea before. Right. So he's raised by leftist parents and he watches leftist entertainment and he goes through leftist classes in school. And this is all just, uh, this is all just what's normal. Like, oh, this is the society that I live in. This is, this is the normal politics. This is the normal view of things. This is this. And so for him, he, um, he's not demoralized by it. It's just, it's, it's as normal to him as our traditional culture is to us. Right. And so as long as that person doesn't see a different point of view that comes from a different value system, he'll probably just carry on. And you, you won't even be an evil person for doing it because to him, it's just the norm, right? Like for him, it's ignorance. It's, it's not maliciousness and it's not even incompetence. It's just ignorance of other possible ideas. But as soon as that person has the bubble burst and they, they, they see the four, they see 4chan for the first time, or they see a YouTuber critiquing what is normal to them for the first time. Now they have a choice. They have to like plug their ears in ignorance or they have to consider another possible idea. And as soon as they start considering, that's when there's a pipeline that leads somewhere else. That's when they realize that, oh, this is not actually the natural world I live in. It's a construction and there are things outside of it. You know, that's actually quite dangerous for the ideologue. Uh, Dean Donald 25 hello Art and Dev. The idea of the Voltex CEO being the one to launch the nukes is not new. It was in the script for Scrap Fallout movie because he wanted so his doomsday predictions to be correct. It's not new, but it is different from what was actually stated in Fallout. Mercy next 21 uh, Gel Apocalypse only proves it's all intentional, Dev. Oops. Proves I'm messing. We, yeah, we talk about him, yeah. I think we talk about him. Uh, SBS becomes a member. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Zero, imagine a localized version of Atlas Shrugged. I mean, I, I think that'd be a cool little book. Yeah, I sound like it. Western localized, of course. The Ar Arch, Arch, is it uh, Arch, is it raining where you are? It's not raining, no. Okay, no, I heard a bunch of rain in my headphones for a minute, and it's these are like noise-canceling headphones, so it could only have come to my computer. Weird. Yeah. Is your house leaking? Nope, I'm fine. Hmm. Anyway, I, I do gotta go though. I gotta go do my own stream. So thanks for having me once again, Arch. Right. I will see you next week. See you, Dev. Have fun. Ah, Dean Dumber 25. Also, in defense for people saying things are not political, in their minds, everything being political means you can't just enjoy things. You always have to be activated like the leftists. Well, that's the thing. Uh, we, we've gone over this multiple times now, but you probably enjoy things because they are normal, but the normal things are normal things because they are normal things. I know that sounds weird, but they're normal because we've made them normal. We've created an entire system around them because they're normal. And our normal is far more based in actual reality, mind you, than their normal, which is why our normal is superior. Our normal is better than the left-wing normal, which is why we should reject every attempt they make to make their normal our normal. Governor not here. Truck a video when? Lazy commie dev. Never. He will never. It, it will require him to take a very large hell chat. It will not happen. I am telling you this. I have been telling you this for very many years now. Yet you continue to, to ignore me. You must understand, chat. It cannot happen. It will require far too large an L on, uh, on Dev's side. Far too large an L. Far too vast an L to be ever considered as truly possible. And we are talking a very large L. Dean Domino 25. Also, if you want to have someone debate Dev, you could bring on Brian Martinez, one of the Honey, honey Badgers. He's doing his own channel, Honey Badgers Arcade. He thinks this isn't about money. It's mostly for power and control. Power and control is definitely an element of it, no doubt. I mean, power and control. Um, how better to gain power and control than through a political means, of course. Political means and political authority. 
Rosa Kotel, friend of the channel, by the way, has her own little YouTube channel as well, so you should definitely, definitely check out. None of the actual problems with DD2, Dagger Ranks Doma 2, will they be fixed because everyone's too busy bitching about world's least intrusive DLC. Nothing locked behind a paywall, and the game is single player, so there's no advantage to be gained. I largely agree, like the microtransactions are not particularly important, and uh, there was a lot of people who blew it up to begin with, where I was told that apparently uh, save slots were microtransactions, they are not. Uh, Trevin Blue, female custodians confirmed in the new codex. Yep, I have seen that, and I will probably do a video on it once I've dug into it a little bit more. Black Mage 9, Japanese word she can mean both for and death. Yes, I actually knew that. P.I. Bros, did Iran actually attack Iran? <laughs> and did Iran attack Israel? Yes. Uh, ir well, I've, I've been looking into it a little bit just while talking and looking now. It seems unclear whether Iran has actually attacked, attacked or whether or not an attack is simply underway, as in heading towards Israel. So we'll have to see about that. Uh, Iran Ban Asher, uh, 30, uh, 30 shekels. Message retracted. Oh, well, I see YouTube is already acting as if Iran had attacked, so that seems like an indication. Dryfi dabbles in it like drugs. Dabbles in it? Dabbles? Dabbles? I'm sure that was in reference to something, but it's, it's too long gone now for me to remember. Shannon Fox 2300. This whole thing of letting the defectors into our group is not a good thing. What can we do with a poisonous snake that would bite us on the turn of a dime? Nothing. We must reject them. They must be kept outside. The little red bridge must be denied his ability to bring further people into the circle. This is important. We cannot have further little red bridges in our midst. One little red bridge is already far too many little red bridges. Uh, Jonathan Smith, Dev, stop being right. Communists and fascists believe in socialist economic theory. However, fascists are culturally centrist, right, both authoritarian. Well, closer, but I don't want to give the fascists the term centrist. I like it too much for myself. Aaron Ben Asher, for 30 more shekels. Arch, in the early years, the kibbutzim sent all their members of fight to fighting service, thus extending mandatory membership to three years in labor and three in the IDF. They basically did what you said. Good. And if you want to immigrate to a country, you should um, you should pay your due dues before you get in there. A little bit of military service, a little bit of agricultural service, I think it's a brilliant idea. Stray Dog, finally catching up again, getting married. Will you be there, oh mighty Emperor Arch? Or at least your blessing. Well, you can have my blessing, at least. Whether or not I'll show up. Well, I, I feel like that would almost be a little weird. <laughs> but hey, if I'm in the neighborhood, I suppose. Uh, T-Bones Gaming, the UK supports Israel. Free Palestine protesters block the streets of every major UK city. Boy, well, that would be interesting. I think that would result in a lot of arrests. Uh, Dorman, you think it's malice that CIA is making Total War 40k based on the leaks I've seen? If they are making it, I, I would say so. Kenshi. I shall note down another five towards Kenshi. I, God, I hope, I hope not. Uh, if they announce 40k uh, Total War, I am actually going to be sad because I don't think they can do it well. In fact, I think a 40k Total War would be pretty much guaranteed to be garbage, so I'm kind of hoping they won't. Uh, mm -hmm. I just don't see CA making a good 40k Total War game. I mean, the last time they tried to innovate and, like, do something new with ranged units was Empire Total War. Like, I... I don't think they have the chops to make a good 40k game. I really, 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 really don't. Particularly not current year uh, Creative Assembly either. Very much so doubt it. Uh, Alex Adamson, the only good localization technically is the Ghost Stories dub, and also an example of when there is zero debate over sub- Versus dub. Well, I don't actually know about that, so I can't say, but I'll take your word for it. Uh, Drivey, Bayonetta gay. If a gay dude's wife is a beard, what a what's a lesbian husband? Hmm. Carpet cleaner? <laughs> yeah, 
I don't, I don't mind that term. Carpet cleaner is a good one. Yeah, carpet cleaner is good. Most next in one, but communism has worked as intended. Millions dead. Well, stated goal, stated objective might differ from proposed goal, even though it might be actually what was intended all along. James Bursey, good day, Arch. Please don't give Bowden any credit. This is all on the administration for giving I Iran a ton of money and turning off restrictions. I am sure this is Biden's fault somehow. <laughs> At least it would make a lot more sense, in my opinion. Uh, Sajad Asmogan just released a video about the female custodians. It's apparently canon now. Yeah, well, we shall have to see, shall we? Uh, Charles Anderson, watch The Expanse. I did. I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. No, not the best I've ever seen, but I think it's pretty good. It's certainly serviceable and adequate, I would say. And quite decent action as well, especially after they got rid of the first season's baddie thingy. Um, I didn't like that one. It was a little bit too dirty for me. Uh, Mr. Floppy Nickers, oh, look, support for Ukraine, money laundering operation is low. What will the military industrial complex do? Oh, hello, Iran. I mean, maybe, maybe. Uh, Russell Cordell, America, please let the muzzies sort themselves out. Stop putting my taxes to waste. And wait, I like Dev's idea. No colonizing bullshit. Let's conquer. Yes. Well, you know, you need colonization. Colonization is what you need. Colonization is good. Uh, zero, fire, zero fire water. Dev, how you gatekeep when they say everything is political, you ban them immediately just like they would to you. Yes, but that would be a political act. And you got to recognize it. Yeah, I was like, okay, everything is political, ban. Why do you Service do this? I'm oppressing you. <laughs> Simple. Mark James. So during the pandemic, GW business increased, but as mode regressed. Uh, what have a model sold, but X Wing miniatures and Star Wars Armada yeah, decrease to the point they Fire are about the dropped. <laughs> That is interesting. Hmm. Uh, Vulture 1066. F the Middle East. Save what I'm a 40k. <laughs> True. Uh, Rosicotl, the whole Middle East or none at all. A good starting point for negotiations. Shanda Fox 2300. Dev, no, we did go in hard and fast, then liberal like you start throwing a fit about it, and our hands got tied by politicians catering to people like you. People like Dev. You must muzzle the devs amongst you. You must. Messon X21. Californian here. I prefer the stick with axe head. And the prequels were good, Dev. Racifist agrees with me. The prequels were better than we thought they were. That'll be my uh, my political middle of the road admission. Mark Saint, I think they them is a double speak word from 1984. Probably. Vodka Lesser becomes a member. Thank you very much. Mark Shame, I don't say everything is political, but politics can be in anything. The issue is they use to connect everything the central political body. Uh, while you're hating, if my enemy wants mercy, they can surrender. Oh. Will you allow them? That's remarkably kind of you, sir. Mark Shame, Dev Manage Democracy, just south of you, look up Washington State Initiative 976. I don't know about that one. I'm sure it's terrifying. Uh, Zero Fire Water, Dev, why do you keep making all these videos except the one you need to make? The Chucky video. Is it because everyone knows your pro state stance? Yes, it is. And ironically, it is. Uh, Glowy, what Dev probably means is every piece of media has politics in it, so it's political, but it's self contained so it can be appropriated as a work of art solely. Most absurdist pictures are used as a way to discredit other politics, so it's a political weapon. Yes, everything is political is a political weapon. No doubt about it. Uh, Thomas Jose, the incompetent are malicious. Treat them as such. Mike Shane, what about Star Wars Empire at War? But what I'm a 40k. But what I'm a 40k. Uh, Tactical Cannon Fodder, do you think Warm 40k could even work in a Total War format? I do not. I think it would be terrible. I think it would suck ass, in fact. As uh, it filed, I forgot about Kenshi, so can my previous chats all count also, count also, Dev? Just because the communists are your people doesn't mean they are your friends. They will throw you under the bus as fast as you invite them. And of course they can, yes. As it afar, it all says, Nah, I'd rather Israel be wiped off the map for the super war crimes they commit in Gaza and America can stop being owned by them. That is an optimistic point of view. Uh, why Hayden, girl custodies, have we lost 40k arch? Oh no, this is just the ammunition we need to begin to fight. 
It is an X. I hope they go through with it. I hope they do. Let's make female space marines a reality so that we can destroy 40k and pick up the publicly available ashes. That, well, that must be the ultimate threat towards Games Workshop. And if they elect to not push it that far, perfect. But if they do, the threat of nuclear annihilation must be real. It is very important. SP Elite, finally, Joe Bungus FR just started a third war. Lol. What's one more war? Hmm? Right, and that is everything. Thank you all very much for watching. Thank you for your incredibly generous donations today as well, and I hope to see you all again very soon, probably with the Female Custodies videos. I'm going to be re- Recording that one probably tonight, judging by uh, it, as it does look pretty, uh, pretty cut and dry as far as I can see right here. Hmm. As far as I can tell from a quick glance, at least. Heresy is the question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. Have a good night, chat.